queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. So the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation queen. away from us or aside from us is come together queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the texture Alma of Dyer. your hair? Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tied the religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay, miss, how we gonna make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. In moderation, they're trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations, I'm getting tired of safety. We are oppressed, queen. I'm getting tired of weight. We are downtrodden, queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. So the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation, queen. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the original Queen Amadai Shakur show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your second morning wake up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. OK, be sure to get those likes up. Also, please double check to make sure that you're still subscribed. OK, if you have not done so already. All right, so with that all being said, hold on. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Okay, so with that all being said, let's get those lights up. Now, I'm going to be sharing my screen to show you all a very important PowerPoint. Um, See, Martinez, don't come and hurt that mask. I'm going to block you. I'm getting tired of Satan. I'm tired of waiting. Anyway, with that all being said, everyone, please get the lights up. Perplex says, we love you, queen. And I love you all right, black beloved. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Donna. All right. Claudette's in the house. Nessie X. C. Martinez is still trolling. Y'all let him live. Uh, Sandra's here. Nandy. Pamela. All hell nods in the house. All right. Tawana is here. Above all the drama. Tawana, did I say you? Uh, Buckhorse DC. Piggy's Picks. Sophie is here. Honey69. Claudette, oh God, is here. Kimberly France, Charlene. Okay, so everyone, please get the likes up. I see you, Sheila Fields. Okay, King Leo in the house. That crazy beast, Aries. Angela is here. All right. Shout out to all of my loyal royals and everyone tuning into the Queen. Let's get ready to get into it. Hey, Spirit Goddess, beloved. Okay, Laverne is here. Bithia, Hurley. All right. Goddess Hazel. I hope I said that right. Okay, hey, Eileen. So we're going to get into it. Hey, Jamal, I'm about to pull up these receipts. Uh, hey, Khalid, I'm going to share my screen. Now, in the event my PowerPoint crashes, I'm going to show it from my email. Okay, I already prepared for that because sometimes these PowerPoints will crash. Um, and so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to share my screen. And as I was telling you all on the last broadcast, hey, Truth No TV, yes, we'll be looking at the eclipse right after this, Okay. We're going to be looking at the eclipse right after this. So with that all being said, this is about the red heifer sacrifice and what that all means. Uh, you know, it coincides with the solar eclipse. So I just want you all to pay attention. Okay, so like stuff, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. Okay, I'm about to share my screen for this PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. Make sure you all can see that. All right, so let's get into it. Let me add a little bit of background music. Let me start my background music real quick. Turn it down just a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about it. Now, the significance of the red heifer sacrifice and prophecy being fulfilled. When Hamas spokesman Abu Ubadah began a speech marking the 100th day of the war in Gaza, one confounding yet eye-opening proclamation escaped the headlines, listing the motives for the Palestinian militant group's October the 7th massacre in Israel. He accused 
uh, the use of bringing red cows to the Holy Land. Now, what are these red cows for? Now, some Jews and Christians believe they're key to rebuilding the Jewish temple that once stood in Jerusalem and beckoning and to beckoning the Messiah. Because remember, I told you all that the solar eclipse, some people believe that this is the second coming. So to understand, you have to look back almost 2,000 years in the tumultuous history of the Middle East when the ancient Romans destroyed the last temple in Jerusalem. Now to rebuild it, fervent believers point to the Bible's book of Numbers, which commands the Israelites to offer a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke, okay? Only with that offering, they insist, can the temple rise again. Now, in September of 2022, a Christian ministry and a temple institution in Jerusalem, uh, they had five helpers that were shipped in from Texas to Jerusalem uh, to be housed at a secure, undisclosed location in Israeli, in Israeli-occupied West Texas. Okay, according to reports, only for, according to reports, only for us, uh, to remain at this point, the altar was already prepared. Hold on, I think this is a typo. Okay, according to reports, the altar is already repaired. Uh, prepared. Okay, so please pay attention. So they basically had these cows shipped in from West Bank, Texas. Okay, now these things were very hard to find because they're very rare. And there's a certain criteria of these red heifers they can't just get any red cow but it has to be very specific okay so please pay attention now from texas to the west bank instrumental in bringing the heifers to the holy land was yitzhak mamo of yuvin jerusalem a group committed to seeing a new temple built in jerusalem's old city now finding the red heifers took years the quest led Mamo not to Jewish breeders, but to Christian ranchers thousands of miles away. After a long search, uh, they were found in Texas. And these are the Texas Red Angus. Now, once in the chat, if you know anything about these red heifers and this prophecy that's supposedly being fulfilled, once in the chat, if you know anything about this, Like that, please. Everyone, please like and share. Okay, so with that all being said, hold on, beloveds. Okay, so now with that all being said, let me see who put ones in the chat. Okay, so everybody's putting twos. Okay, so this is exactly what I was thinking. And this is most people are putting twos. And this is why I was, uh, I knew it was very important to talk about this. And also, let me say, recall when those beef, Texas beef dealers sued Oprah over the burger comment on her show. It was during every season. Okay, uh, the temple in the Bible says nothing about red heifers, they ain't even the true people, it's all ridiculous. Okay, TF, y'all, you're entitled to your opinion, but I'm going to show you where it does say something about that in the Bible. And listen, we know who the people are, we know who the people are, so please pay attention. Okay, with that all being said, let me continue. Now, the thing of it is, this is absolutely in the Bible, beloved. I don't know what part of the Bible you read, okay. I don't know what part of the Bible you read. And also, I'm sorry. I don't know why I told you our West Bank was Texas. Actually, the cows were shipped from Texas to West Bank. Okay? West Bank is over there. Um, it was shipped over there to Israel in West Bank. And at the end of the day, it was put in an undisclosed place. Now, they had five of them, but currently, they only kept four. All right? They only kept four. So, please pay attention. Now, let me continue. Now, to bypass strict laws in place at the time uh, that banned the export of U.S. cattle to Israel, the heifers were classified as pets. So they had to lie, basically, to get them over there. So 
So they said there were pets. And this is according to Mamo, who was one of the people that was integral in getting them to be shipped there. Those who follow the biblical commandments understand the seriousness of this. Now, though they're classified as pets, they will certainly not be treated as such. Okay, a massive white altar awaits where they are to be burned on a plot of land overlooking the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Mammo said the ceremony must be performed uh, looking directly into where the ancient second temple stood until it was destroyed by the Romans in the year 70. Now, a paradox box uh, that nobody chose or that nobody uh, can close what Mamo didn't mention is what stands in the temple's place right now. And that is the dome of the rock of Al-Aqsa Mosque, which are among the holiest sites in Islam. Okay, so this poses a problem because this belongs to the Muslims over there. Now, Mosaic law says the burning of the ashes of the red heifer is a mandatory act for beginning the temple offering. Please pay attention. The Mosaic law was given specifically to the nation of Israel. This is recorded in Exodus 19, Leviticus 26 and 46, uh, 26 and 46, Romans 9 and 4. Now it was made up of three parts. That's the Ten Commandments, the ordinances, and the worship system, which include the priesthood, the tabernacle, and offerings, and the festivals. Now here are the scriptures where all of this stuff is found that this is absolutely in the Bible. Exodus 20 through 40, Leviticus 1 through 7, and then 23. Uh, the purpose of the Mosaic law was to accomplish the following. Now please pay attention because this is why they have Mosaic law. The first reason is to reveal the holy character of the eternal God to the nation of Israel. And there's the scripture that goes along with it. See, when I bring receipts and I'm talking about scripture, I'm going to tell you what scripture you can find this stuff at. Okay, so this is absolutely in the Bible. Please pay attention to you of y'all beloved. Now, the second reason is set apart the nation of Israel as distinct from all the other nations. Okay, that's an exodus. The third reason is to reveal the sinfulness of man. That's in Galatians. Now, although the law was good and holy, Romans, and this is in, you can find this in Romans uh, chapter seven, it did not provide salvation for the nation of Israel. No one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sins. This is in Romans and Acts. Now, provide forgiveness through the sacrifice or the offerings. This is in Leviticus for the people who had faith in the Lord in the nation of Israel. Okay, like I said, we know who the people are. Provide a way of worship for the community of faith through the early, through the yearly feast. Uh, it was to provide God's direction for the physical and spiritual health of the nation. And then lastly, to reveal to humanity that no one can keep the law, but everyone falls short of God's standard of holiness. Okay? And that's what I've already told you all before. I always say we all fall short of the glory of God. Okay? None are absolutely 100% worthy. Now, that realization causes us to rely on God's mercy and grace. When Christ came, he fulfilled the law and with his death paid the penalty for our breaking it, uh, for our breaking it. Now, by faith in him, the believer has the very righteousness of Christ imputed to him. The purpose of the Mosaic law raises these questions. Are you trusted in yourself to keep all of the Ten Commandments all of the time, which you can't do? Okay, nobody, nobody does. Okay, or have you made the choice to accept Jesus as your Savior, realizing that he has fulfilled all the commandments all the time uh, for you, even paying your penalty for breaking them? Now, the choice is yours. The ashes of the red heifer is the key element in the biblical purification ritual. These ashes are required for purification in a range of situations, and this includes contact with dead bodies. Now, in Numbers chapter 19, verses 1 through 2, and the, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Hebrews 9.13 says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats 
and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh. And then Hebrews 9, 14 says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered him, himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, the reason I put all of those scriptures in there was to purposely let you all know that this is in the Bible, because I knew there would be some people who doubt it, but it's absolutely in the Bible, okay? I'm a biblical scholar. Now, clearly the purpose of the law of the red heifer was to purify those who had come, who had become ritually unclean, okay? Through contact with death and allow them back into the presence of God or into his temple, in other words, basically to take away the defilement of death that stood between God and man. With the bloodshed on the temple mount for centuries, the mount must now be cleansed before the temple can be built. Now, there hasn't been a red heifer fit for the sacrifice in Israel for the past 2,000 plus years. That's likely an entire age, okay? And how long does an astrological age last? Well, since each zodiac, each side of the zodiac is composed of 30 degrees, each astrological age might be thought to last about 72 years times the 30 degrees, which equals about 2,160 years. That's how long an age lasts. And I've told you all that before, especially those that follow the spiritual channel. Okay, red heifers are extremely rare, which makes them difficult to find, especially since the one fit for the sacrifice must meet the exact biblical requirements. And here are the five requirements that must be met. First off, it must be female. And actually, um, a female cow is, in fact, a heifer, okay? The second thing is, cannot have ever been used for any sort of labor. The third, it can't, can't ever have been pregnant. Must be between three and four, three to four years old. And lastly, must be completely red without a spot or blemish with no more than two hairs that aren't red. Even the hooves must be red. Now, this is why it took them years to find it. Now, in the Bible, the red heifer is a symbol of Christ, okay? It's a symbol of Jesus Christ, okay? Representing his sacrifice of blood to allow the children of Israel to enter the Holy of Holies or the presence of God. The non-conical ep epistle of Barabbas, okay? Now, that's 8-1 explicitly chapter eight, verse one, explicitly equates the red heifer with Jesus. Okay. Explicitly. Now I want y'all to pay attention. Now, many say the red heifer sacrifice. Now here's the part you need to know. Many say the red heifer sacrifice will escalate things and eventually lead to war. This will be major because one side will say it's time to build their temple. The Muslims will say that it is their temple mount given to them by the Romans. They would likely collectively come for Israel. Now, you may think this won't have anything to do with us in the United States, but if this escalation occurs, it most definitely will. You see, this could lead to protests in the U.S. and conflicts between the left and the right. It could lead to cyber attacks and all sorts of chaos. People will be pitted against each other based on their belief systems. This could lead to massive chaos in this country. And we can't, pre we can't prepare for everything, you know, but you must be spiritually prepared. And we've seen the earthquakes that I told you all was coming. I told you all months ago, those of you on the spiritual channel, I told you to expect the earthquakes. Okay, we've seen the bridge collapse and et cetera. Uh, these things happen without any warning. So you have to expect the unexpected because we don't know exactly how this whole sacrificing of this red heifer is going to play out. But I can assure you it's not going to be good. Now, this isn't to instill fear mongering. It is merely to get you prepared for the unexpected. Okay, so please follow the lifelines that I've given you since Thanksgiving Day of 2020 because all we can do is prepare as best we can. Okay, please pay attention. Now, with that all being said, we're going to now watch uh, the eclipse. And Danielle said Japan had another earthquake. Okay, I'm not surprised. Thank you for letting me know, beloved. Okay, uh, Muslims getting ready to fight. Al Jazeera already said this. Thank you. 
Uh, that's what I'm talking about, T of God, beloved. That's that's why I'm reporting on this. You see, because all of this conflict that's going to be going on even more so in the Middle East, because it's going to escalate. This absolutely can affect us. Okay, this can absolutely affect us at the end of the day. That stuff's going to come over here because you have people belonging to those same groups right over here. There's going to be protests and there's going to be all kinds of mess. And then, like I said, cyber attacks and all these other things could happen. So we have to be very diligent and make sure that we have the things that we need. Okay. And then Dan says, don't forget the conflict between Iran and Israel. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so with that all being said, now I'm going to switch over. Uh, to the so we can watch the satellite viewing all hell now said the sacrifice is supposed to happen this month yes absolutely okay so likes up everyone please like and share i'm going to share my screen uh, so we can view this the herding group says civil war right here in these streets absolutely beloved it could very very seriously it could absolutely uh resort uh, resort to that okay so this is nothing we should be taking lightly um, black people remain in fearless focus and forward moving, not fearful, but ready for the changing of the guards. Absolutely, beloved. Absolutely. Okay. No need to be fearful. Uh, just make sure that you're doing your due diligence. That's all you have to do. Okay. That's all you have to do. So with that all being said, and like I said, we know who the people that they're talking about in the Bible are. Okay. So please pay attention. All right, hence the images that I use. Okay, so now with that all being said, I'm going to share my screen. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance.
Why does it look so foggy? It looks really, really foggy. Dan says at 12, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when the total eclipse will make first, uh, will make first an appearance in the United States. That crazy beach Aries, Dan just put it in the chat, beloved. Oh, Dan said Central Time. Okay, thanks, beloved. You guys saying you can't hear me? I'm not saying anything. I have my mic off. I'm on the phone for a second, okay?
Okay, so for those of you who were saying my audio was muted, I purposely muted it. I was on a phone call. Okay, somebody was calling me asking if I got my water and food ready and all of that, which I find interesting. J Love said the sun just looks really weird today. And you're in Lawrence, Kansas. Okay. These folks have flocked to Texas from all around the globe, okay? All right, Desmond, I see you got your donuts. All right. for your son, J. Love, the queen, beloved. Prayers up for your son and for his safety. Hey, Helen. Mm, okay. Now, can you all see where this footage is, is uh, from? It's showing uh, Mazatlan, Mexico, Niagara Falls, New York, Mesquite, Texas, and Hot Springs, Arkansas.
Now I'm gonna tell you guys like this, NASA's gonna start streaming it at one o'clock. keep saying y'all can't hear me but i'm on the phone i was on the phone everybody said no sound i wasn't talking i was literally on the phone okay thank you miss speeches <laughs> let me put that on the screen i was on the phone beloved so so here's the thing listen so nasa is going to start streaming this at one o'clock so since nasa is going to start streaming at one Honey, just not say queen, they're crazy, okay? All right, babe. Oh, thank you, Real McCoy. <laughs> Desmond said, y'all meddling, okay? <laughs> Tim, y'all said we all in your business. I know, right? Queen, give us a hand signal, girl, the phone. Okay. I was trying to hold the phone up. I thought y'all could see it. I was trying to hold it up. Okay, so listen, NASA is going to start streaming at one o'clock. So with that all being said, let's do some trivia while we're waiting. Okay, let me just make sure they're streaming at one o'clock. Hold on. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Let me just double check real quick. Okay. Now, so with that all being said, Danielle said this is definitely a time for prayer, okay? Sir is still doing that Adam splitting too. Yes, absolutely. News about a lady going to the eclipse. She was sitting... In an airstream, her husband was towing. Strong wind blew the door open. She was thrown out of the airstream and hit her head and died. Wow, are you serious, Ella? That is so sad. Prayers and condolences to the family. That is absolutely awful. Ella 
Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share for a second. I just want to tell you guys, the NASA is going to start streaming it live at 1 o'clock, so we're going to switch over to there. Okay, so it's just a little bit after 12 now. So listen, so to keep ourselves occupied, okay, to keep ourselves occupied, why don't we do some trivia, okay? Ella said, yes, it was a doctor from New York. It was on the news this morning. That is so sad. Let me see if I can find the story, beloved. I really hate to hear that. Here's a report right here. I'm going to share my screen. Hold on. Oh, no. It's a sad start to solar eclipse weekend here in central New York. A Long Island woman traveling to the region to take in totality tomorrow died on Saturday. New York State troopers were called to State Route 12E in Brownville around 3 p.m. where a pickup truck was pulling a house trailer. 58-year-old Monica Warnitschke, along with her family members, were riding in the trailer, traveling from Stony Brook to a campsite to see the eclipse. Witnesses say the wind caused a side door to swing open and Warnitschke was thrown from the trailer. She was taken to Samaritan Medical Center where she was later pronounced dead. The investigation is ongoing. Mm. Okay, so that's very sad news. Uh, that is very sad news. Condolences to the family once again. Okay, so with that all being said, while we're waiting for NASA, because they're gonna start, they're gonna start um streaming at one o'clock. So do you all want to have trivia? Once in the chat, if you all want to have trivia while we wait. Once in the trivia. If you all want, I mean, once in the chat, if you all want to have trivia while we wait. Perplex says, should we be outside or inside, queen? <laughs> whatever you choose, beloved, whatever you choose, okay? I'm going outside today, honey, in a little bit. I'm going outside after we get off of here. Okay, so once. Okay, so we're going to have trivia. We're going to have trivia. Now, mind you, moderators, please put the link in the, or put the email in the chat. Okay, send your answers to the root of all evil, 227 at gmail.com. Okay. Hold on, let me share the screen real quick. I'm here to watch the eclipse and I wanted to go, I was here in Dallas, so I said I'll come out and Listen to him while I get my questions ready. Oh, I love Mesquite. Uh, this is a place where you can see the real, you know, the big uh, state of uh, Texas and all the local people away from the big town. I've always been in the big town and it's so nice to be in the neighborhood where people are really enjoying and it's really a celebration here. Luckily, I had seen the last one, August 21st, in 2017, I was in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and then I drove all the way to, I believe, Lincoln, Nebraska, it was pouring rain, it was no expectation of clear skies, and uh, it was a very narrow band for total totality, and just while the totality came, clear skies, clouds were still there, but you could see the darkness, you see the full eclipse and it was amazing. You could see the nature, I saw the field and it was an experience that I would love to have again and again. Uh, 
I am very optimistic. The experience is going to be amazing in my view. And as the midday skies come up, I think the sun will kind of help us to clear out the lower, lower clouds. And I think it's going to be very exciting. Okay, so you are ready. Let me get my little timer. I am going to look at some of the corona and I'm also going to look at the nature, how the nature turns. This is the... Okay. Miss Peachy says she's at work and she works outside. Okay. Chosen one said you're looking out the window. Okay. Truth Brown said I'm outside today. I know that's right. Okay, so with that I've been saying, let's get ready for the trivia. Now, I just came up with some questions off the top of my head for you guys. Okay? <laughs> Hold on. Let me pull up my, my stopwatch. Now, you're going to have 30 seconds on the clock. You're going to have 30 seconds on the clock. And Danielle is reminding you guys, Danielle says, if anyone in the chat has pants, keep them indoors until that eclipse uh, is over because it can confuse and frighten them. Yes, if you remember, I told you all days ago that pets may become confused during the eclipse. Okay, so make sure you keep an eye on your pets. Okay, Pennywise said she's going outside too. Okay, Juju said outside, outside. I know that's right. Courtney J said I work from home, but I will be outside. Okay, great. Okay, so don't forget to tend to your pets, beloved. Thanks, Danielle, for reminding everybody. Okay, so with that all being said, let's get into it. Now, you all get ready because I'm giving the first question of the trivia. You will have 30 seconds to get your answers in. You must send your answers to the root of all evil 227 at gmail.com. That is the email. Okay, um, one of the moderators, please put the email in the chat that they need to send the answers to, please. Thank you ever so kindly. Uh, Asaf ben, ben Judah says, my queen, much love from UK. Thank you, beloved. Thank you. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Okay, Ali says, I'm outside now, queen. Okay, Pamela says she works outside. Okay. Above all drums said, oh, so that's why both my dogs have a book, have a buku attitude problem now. <laughs> yes, that's probably exactly what it is. I'm speaking to the universe what I want from it doing this. I know that's right, Miss Peaches. You all better be manifesting, okay? Today's the day for manifesting. Please pay attention. All right, so with that all being said, here is the first question. And just so you guys are warned and know, these first three questions... These first three questions for the trivia are coming from the broadcast that I just did about the red heifer and about uh, from the video I did about the solar eclipse. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, here's your first question. What are two things that the red heifer must have? There was five all together. I'm going to need you to send me two things that the red heifer must have in order to be fit for the sacrifice. Time starts now. You got 30 seconds. Get those answers in. Okay, Queen Sam said manifest in a home. I know that's right. All right. So with that all being said, get those answers in. Truth Brown said, I promise my animals acting crazy early. Okay. This is all nefarious. Y'all get those answers in. Y'all get those answers in. Okay. Time is up. Time is up. 30 seconds is up. Let me see what y'all got. King Ray says, Shalom, Queen of Zion. I love your show. But I just heard an hour ago that these people are the uh are the, the sky with chemicals. I think two hours before the eclipse. So they're putting chemicals in the sky, beloved. You know what? I'm not surprised because here's the thing. It's all nefarious because I told you all days ago that they're activating Project CERN, okay, the world's biggest particle accelerator on, on today. And they're also sending three rockets towards the sun. So they're clearly doing a bunch of nefarious things. You know, like I told you all, some Christians believe that this is the second coming. And so these devils are out here doing stuff to try to stop it. It's all I think. Okay, also nefarious. Okay, likes up, everyone. Please don't forget to like and share. Thank you for that information, beloved. Let me see who got the right answer. <laughs> Let me see who got the first right answer in here. Hilarious. Hold 
Okay, the first person that got the correct answer in was Aboriginal woman. Aboriginal woman got the answer in first. Aboriginal woman said no spots or blemishes and the whole red very good answer, beloved. I'm about to send you a free ebook. Okay, congratulations. Okay, for the rest of you, there's more questions coming, so you'll have your turn. All right, so we got a winner. Honey, I don't know why some of these people be in my chat trolling me and hating on the queen, honey. Okay? I'm one of the few people that gives away free stuff. They need to sit down somewhere is all I'm saying. All right? Okay, so I'm sending you, Aboriginal woman, the ebook titled Daily Prayers and Meditations for Your Royal Spirit. It's on the way. Okay? It's on the way. And so with that all being said, let's get to the next question. Let's get to the next question. Hold on. Let me get this up real quick. All right. So here's the next question. M. Shantae said, I'm an amateur photographer. And on my morning to uh, morning 2K walk, I took pictures of the sun. I saw strange things flying towards the sun. Really? Mm-hmm. Take their negative energy away from the queen's cookout. <laughs> Says Queen Sam. Not the queen's cookout. Okay? Them devils cannot sacrifice anything. It has to be black limba Levites. Okay? Uh, so with that all being said, <laughs> Real McCoy said that's Clown Puffy Combs group trolling. You already know, right? <laughs> you already know, beloved. Hold on. Manifesting with the queen today. Thank you, we the people. Okay, so now here's the next question. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. Helen said, probably Tisa Tales. She's always using the queen's content and never gives the queen credit. Okay? Uh, please pay attention. I'm so glad you all know this. Thank you, beloved. Okay, so now with that all being said, here we go. Okay, here is the second question. You'll have 30 seconds to get the answers in. Sent to the email, the root of all evil, 227 at gmail.com. And so here's the question. What seven cities, now you only have to name one, okay? But there are seven cities that the solar eclipse is going to pass over. It's named after an ancient city in the Bible. What is the name of these seven cities? 30 seconds. What is the name of these seven cities? All right, 10 seconds. I mean, 20 seconds left. Okay, time is up. I even gave you all a few extra seconds. Let me see what y'all got. Let me see what you guys got. Hold on here. Let me see who got the first, got the answer first. Okay, so the first winner, the first winner is Patsy McKelvey. Patsy McKelvey said Nineveh. That's the correct answer, beloved. Okay, I'm about to send you an ebook. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. 
All right. Congratulations, Patsy. Your ebook is on the way. Oh, also, yes. Thank you for saying that. No. Dad said, Queen, they're cheating. <laughs> Courtney said she sent the wrong answer. Dad said you all are cheating. And then somebody said no answers in the chat. Right. Do not put answers in the chat. Okay. Do not. Please don't put answers in the chat. Okay. With that all being seen. All right. Let's get ready for the next question. Hold on just a second. Okay, so here's the third question. What constellation did I tell you uh, when I did the video about the solar eclipse? What constellation did I tell you would be directly above the solar eclipse? If you don't remember the name of it, you can tell me what it looks like. Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, time is up. Time is up. Let me see what you guys got. Let me see who got the answer first. No. What are you trying to argue for? Okay, so somebody named Danielle got the correct answer. They said it's, uh, it's Cetus. Okay, so Cetus is the correct answer. Congratulations to you, beloved. I'm sending you um, a free ebook. All right, congratulations to Danielle. I hope I'm saying your name right. Peace, love, and blessings. Oh, okay. Galan 1982 said that's you. Okay, well, congratulations, beloved. I just sent it to you. All right. So now let's see what's going on with this eclipse. Hold on. Okay, so let's go back to the eclipse. I'm gonna share the screen again. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. Here we go. Congratulations to all the winners.
Okay, so let's see what they're talking about on Fox News, guys. Let's see what they're talking about on Fox News. And like I said, NASA's going to start streaming in about 30, 35 minutes. Okay, please pay attention. I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to switch to another viewing for a second. ready for this Mike they really are you said this is the show me state I mean people are showing up for this people from I've met people from Colorado Florida Georgia I mean seriously every time I speak with someone it seems like they're from another corner of the country and I want to say the t-shirts I'm seeing today are very funny as well there's a lot of fun uh, shirts fun different different things here as people begin to prep for the totality here in Cape Girardeau we get four minutes of it just about four minutes that's happening at 158 local time 258 eastern town and these crowds you can see behind me are filling in there's a block party coming up here um, they say they chose Cape Girardeau specifically, again, because of those four minutes of complete darkness, one guy I spoke with said he just finished driving 14 hours overnight, and he said it was a last-minute decision. Do it, and then last minute I said, you know what, it's a 14-hour drive, I'm going to come out and see this. I saw the 2017 eclipse, and it was outstanding. I've been following the weather nonstop, and I could tell that... <laughs> This was probably the best spot for the weather. So now the parking lots are pretty much filled here. People have got their lawn chairs ready to go. They're staking out their spots and they're hoping for clear weather. Right now, the weather is awesome here in Cape Girardeau. Back to you. Yeah, that looks like the best spot. I know uh, Missouri and Illinois look like they are going to have perfect weather. We've been looking at other parts in the country, New York, Philadelphia, a little bit cloudy as well as Texas. But you guys, you guys have the right idea of being there in Missouri and Illinois, no doubt about it there. So uh, we appreciate uh, the input as always and uh, happy looking up to the sky coming up in just a little bit, Oliviana. Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks. You take care. And we will continue our coverage here in a moment. Stay right here with us. Always more to come. Live look at Niagara Falls as well as people claiming their spots ahead of the total solar eclipse.
<laughs> We're gearing up here for you on live now from Fox. Moments away from the total solar eclipse coverage that you will be seeing right here on live now from Fox. We appreciate all our viewers continuing to watch with us all in real time. We want to go out now to our friends over at Fox 29 Philadelphia. They continue their coverage, getting us ready for the total solar eclipse. Right? Yes. Is that yes. what it was? Yes. Jake, Jake, Jake. Yes. Yeah. Well, good to meet you. What's your name? Jeffrey Rogers. Awesome. Yeah, you live here in, in Rochester, Rochester, New York. Enjoy the eclipse. Yes, sir. Get that sun to come out. Come on. Goals have been realized, Mike. You've been trying to become TikTok famous. Did you also see at WrestleMania, one of the people, what's his name? Smoke something. Uh, he was a famous YouTuber. He came out. He helped. Um, Logan Paul come out of the ring anyway. So every, all the streamers, my kids are like, oh my God, he gets $10 million yeah. a month. So I'm you're TikTok halfway famous. on your way. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where are you from? We we came from Ithaca. Oh, that's but... not far. No. Yeah, Ithaca as well. Yeah. 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 Cornell, yeah. yeah. Awesome Cornellian over here. Nicely done. Intelligent people. <laughs> Very smart people. Thank yep. God. Are you upset? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. You know, I saw the one in 2017, so this isn't I so bad, but you know, we're maybe, yeah. We're holding out hope. We're holding out hope here in Rochester. Come yeah. on, son. We're under two hours to go now, Mike, so we're beginning to get yeah. into that window. We've got our countdown clock on, so we're under two hours. Yes. Hello. I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, I'm from the Limerick area, so close oh, enough. Oh, yeah, Limerick. That's where all that white stuff comes up. Limerick. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yeah, what does say, uh, uh, say anus on your shirt? Well, because my, oh, lovely, your anus. my sure. lovely three year old daughter has, for the last couple months, has been giving us planet names, and my husband is Jupiter wearing a Jupiter shirt, and she's Mars. And she chose Uranus for me. And my dad thought it was so funny. He thought, let's buy him t-shirts. Oh, I love it. Good to meet you. What's your Good name? Good to meet you, Missy. Missy. So you're back in Limerick. All right, Mike. So, of course, our coverage, as I said, we're under two hours. So we're going to be here. You can keep it right here. So from 2 to 4, we're going to be on TV on Fox 29. And always we're streaming on Fox Local as well, just like we are now. Then from 4 to 5, we'll be back here exclusively on Fox Local, and then you know what happens at 5 o'clock. we got the 5 o'clock news right here on Fox 29. So be sure to keep it and watch us however you do, whether you should two hours. Yes. Hello, I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, from the Limerick area, so close oh, enough. Oh, yeah, Limerick. That's where all that white stuff comes up. Limerick. <laughs> yep. What does say, uh, uh, say anus on your shirt? Well, because my, oh, lovely, your anus. my sure. lovely three-year-old daughter has, for the last couple months, has been giving us planet names. And Okay, now let's go to the other channel. Hold on. your gas mask beloved that's <laughs> not that serious is it
Y'all see that? That's in Mexico. You all see that? All right, uh, Locked Can Queen Candy J, thank you for, for dropping by, beloved. Love you and miss you.
Okay, so a gentleman who won the book, the uh, uh, the uh, ebook in the trivia just now, wants to know what it's about. Well, in that book that you won, beloved, it's daily prayers, okay? It's just daily prayers for you to say, you know, um, as you meditate and just get you started on your day. That's all it is. Just a bunch of daily prayers for different occasions um, for you to do during the day, okay? And that's actually from my spiritual channel. I make those for the members of my spiritual channel, beloved. I know that's right. Okay, let's go to another. Let's go to another uh channel. Hold on. That's Fox News. Shalom, Jacqueline, beloved. Shalom, shy Hannah, beloved. Let's go to the next channel. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Thank you, Shy Hannah, beloved. I appreciate you. Just look at that. You're welcome, Hundia. A volcano blowing smoke rings. Let me see if I can find that, beloved. Thank you for letting me know. Sister Lisa Cabrera just talked about a volcano blowing smoke rings. So I'm going to show you all that footage. Okay, this happened like a day or so ago. Hold on. Or is it happening right now? Hold on, let me see when this was posted. Yeah, this says it was from yesterday. So hold on, I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Likes up, everyone, please like and share.
Yeah. Okay, so I wanted you all to see that. That's absolutely crazy. That's real interesting. <clears throat> Volcano is smoking a Newport, says Queen Sam. Okay. Now, I told you guys in the video that I did about the solar eclipse that there was going to be strange activity from the volcanoes and there was going to be earthquake and all of that. Okay, so real interesting. Let's go back to the share, see what's going on here. I'm switching back and forth. Switching back and forth again. I want you all to see this. Hold on. I'm trying to see which one is it. Okay. I think it's this one. is some complete darkness let's pop back over to that other camera that we do have that is over in mexico you can see folks are gathered in large numbers because it does appear in just about an hour or so we will see totality over there on the pacific coast of mexico do want to bring in a guest now to help uh, take a look at conditions over in buffalo new york we do have elizabeth carey with AAA out there for us thank you so much for being here with us today yeah, happy to join you. There's a lot of excitement right here along the shores of Lake Erie. Uh, there's some eclipse chasers that are here setting up photographic equipment. I talked to them. They're up from Florida, so came all the way up here to, to view this. And uh, there's a little restaurant called Hoax here that's right on the water, famous for people to come and watch snowstorms here in Buffalo. Well, now people are starting to arrive to hopefully see the eclipse, but we do have some cloud cover, hoping that moves out. Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask you. So is there kind of a backup plan? Because I know that there are so many different events that are going on there in Buffalo. It's still, what, about two hours away from totality there. But what happens if that cloud cover is still there? Yeah, unfortunately, we won't have the view that everyone was hoping for if the clouds do stay in place. But there is a chance that they could start moving out. I talked to a friend in Cleveland a little while ago from a Fox station, actually, and uh, they said that the clouds just moved out there, clear skies. And there are some patches of blue behind me, so depending on the location, you might have a better view. A lot of people are lined up in Niagara Falls today, uh, checking the view from there, so people got there bright and early to get a good spot. And you can see right behind me the city of Buffalo, and that's where you mentioned there's a lot of activities going on. Rooftop parties at bars, at hotels.
time to be here with us and give us kind of a view of what's going on. Anything else you want to add here about this before I let you go? You know, just a reminder to everyone to have a good time, enjoy it, keep those glasses on, and hopefully we get to experience the eclipse in totality right here on the shores of Lake Erie. Hey, that's what we're all hoping for. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. Thank you. All right, everybody, do want to take you out to some of the other live images that we do have here at this hour. This is a beautiful shot coming in from Niagara Falls. You can see. NASA started streaming, so we're going to NASA stream right now. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Hold on. Hello, and welcome to live coverage of the celestial event of the year, the total solar eclipse. Over the next three hours, we will follow the moon's shadow as it races across North America. We are anchoring our coverage from the heart of downtown Cleveland, Ohio, just down the road from NASA's Glenn Research Center, the only NASA center in today's path of totality. I'm NASA's Megan Cruz, and this is NASA lunar scientist Sarah Noble. Hello. Today, NASA and the Great Lakes Science Center is hosting this free outdoor event for the community to experience the total solar eclipse together. You saw that beautiful aerial shot that we just had opening the show. You're, we're seeing it again here. As you can see, we have a great, fun, fun crowd here. Yeah, we've been watching the crowd build all morning, and you can really feel the excitement starting to come now. Yeah, absolutely. The watch item, of course, is the weather. Beautiful right now here in Cleveland. It's perfect right now. It's perfect. <laughs> Yes. We woke up to rain and it cleared, but I don't know what we're going to feel it get this afternoon. Yeah, Sarah, you said that with a little bit of trepidation, and that's because <laughs> it looks like there might be some cloud cover around the time of the total uh, solar eclipse here totality, but we'll see. All right, so on your screen now is the first look at the eclipse from Mazatlan, Mexico, one of the first communities the moon's shadow will darken today. Uh, right now, you see we're seeing a partial eclipse of the sun right now, but if you look at the upper left-hand corner of your screen, we're expecting totality there in about an hour and four minutes. And we want to thank our team of telescope operators spread out across North America. Because of them, we will always have a view of the sun during this entire broadcast, which is That's right, awesome. all the way from Mazatlan up to Maine. Yeah, very large swath, and we have it covered the whole way through. Now, if you scan your QR code that you see on the screen here, it'll take you to a live stream dedicated to just those telescope views, and it'll also take you to a Spanish broadcast of today's eclipse, and that starts at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And Sarah, as you know this, all of the telescopes used for this broadcast have special filters on them, and those protect the operator's equipment and also the operators themselves, because if you view the eclipse without the proper protection, then it can severely damage your eyes. Yeah, that's right. We want everyone to enjoy the eclipse today, but we want them to do it safely. Right. So, how do you do that safely? Well, you should be shielding your eyes with eclipse glasses like these. Hopefully, you bought them from a reputable source, and then they have a special rating on them, and this rating means that the lenses meet international standards to protect your eyes from the sun's bright light. But Sarah, you can remove the glasses during totality. That's correct? right. If you're lucky to be in the path of totality, you can for those, you know, that short amount of time that you're in 100% totality, 99% totality doesn't cut it. Right, exactly. 100%, nothing less. Now, if you don't have eclipse glasses, you can enjoy it indirectly with tools like pinhole projectors. And if you want to make one with us live in about 30 minutes, just grab a sturdy piece of paper or cardboard and a thumbtack or other sharp pin. I'm going to use my NASA pin for one we get. All right, so Sarah, what are we expecting today? What is a total solar eclipse? So total solar eclipse happens when the, the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun are so perfectly aligned that the Moon completely blacks out our view of the Sun. And does that happen often? You know, actually, somewhere in the world, there's an eclipse about every 18 months or so, but like in any particular place, it's a pretty rare event. Yeah, I mean, specifically here in Cleveland, the last time Cleveland had a total solar eclipse, get this, 1806. Wow, that's remarkable. So quite a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> All right, but not everyone is going to be able to see the moon completely eclipsing the sun. That's right. Only those of us in this narrow path of totality, but just about everyone in the U.S. will get to see a partial eclipse today, weather permitting. Weather permitting, yes. I hope that Cleveland here and everyone else along the uh, path of totality will be good and clear. 
Okay, so let's take a look at today's path of totality. It passes through parts of Mexico, 15 U.S. states, and southeastern Canada. There's an estimated 32 million people who live along the path, and not to mention the tens of thousands of people who travel to somewhere along it as well, like us. You know, you're from D.C. and I'm from Florida. So I feel very lucky to be able to get to travel to see this one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to have live reports from our correspondents spread out across the path all excited to share this event with you. Some recognizable locations in between, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, home of the famous Indy 500, and then also Niagara Falls, where officials expect up to a million visitors. Look at our team there waving at you. Happy to see you guys, and we'll hear from you soon. Okay, so again, we will hear from those correspondents, but also on our broadcast, a live interview with astronauts on board the International Space Station. Sarah's already I'm ready. So excited She's ready. Because that's going to be obviously a unique place to witness today's celestial event. So we'll talk to them about that. We're also going to explain some of the science NASA will conduct during the eclipse and why that's important to you. And if you have questions about today's cosmic alignment, use the hashtag eclipse to send those in wherever you're watching us. We already have some questions from some kids Excellent. and a celebrity. I can't wait to surprise you with who that is. All right, in addition to NASA's eclipse event here, there are plenty more in communities across the country, so why don't we take a look at some of them now? All right, so this is the California Academy of Sciences. That's a beautiful place to, to wow, witness. Wow, looks like they have great weather today. They're only going to get a partial eclipse there, but, you know, still, that is more than enough reason to get outside and enjoy some time with your friends and family. Waco, Texas, people have their seats. They're ready to go. They're all comfortable. I see some coolers I there. <laughs> oh. And this is the Adirondack Sky Center. They have a big field for people to be, you know, a couple of days ago, we saw the same field. It was covered it's in covered snow. snow. So I'm glad they have a nice place to sit. Exactly. <laughs> and Kennedy Space Center, the famous rocket garden that we have at the visitor's complex there. That's also a cool place to watch. A partial, partial eclipse. Yep. Yeah. And then lastly, the Mentor Civic Amphitheater. A nice... Now we want to know which team you're on. Uh, you can cast your vote by going to at NASA Solar System on Facebook X or Instagram, and we'll, we'll reveal the winning team at the end of the broadcast. <clears throat> the moon shadow will only be over land for about an hour and 28 minutes today, moving at an average speed of about 1,900 miles an hour. Keeping track of it for us is NASA's James Traley. Yeah, thanks so much, Megan. I'm going to have to go with option number three there, the sun, because it gives us the energy for us to thrive here on Earth. And speaking of energy, it is bustling here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. I'm coming to you from our new Gateway exhibit, where we today only have a partial eclipse, but still super excited to be tracking all of today's events live with our Eclipse Explorer. This right here is a fantastic tool that was developed by our friends at NASA Goddard Science Visualization Studio. They put this tool together for us to track the eclipse down to the exact second. If you wanted to get an access to this yourself, get a feel <laughs> for how this is going to look in your neck of the woods, you can go to go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipse explorer and you can track where your city is going to be, your zip code, by punching it into this little box here. It's going to snap right to your location and give you some key stats. You just saw Cleveland there, so I can bring them up here. <laughs> Cleveland is expecting peak totality here to start at 313.45 to be precise local time. They've got a time of totality of 3 minutes, 49 seconds, plenty of time to really sit back and bask in their moment in the fully eclipsed sun. I'm going to be tracking all of this all throughout the afternoon for you to make sure that you do not miss a second of this coverage. Even if you're outside of that path of totality like we are right here, more than 99% of the U.S. is going to be able to see at least a partial eclipse. 
some places are already experiencing, you just saw that footage from Mazatlan a little while ago, they are already experiencing a partial eclipse. And as always, if you are in partial, be sure to wear proper eye protection to protect your vision so you can safely enjoy today's fantastic celestial event. Plenty of awesome stuff coming up. We're gonna keep a keen eye on that weather. Cleveland's looking nice and beautiful, very clear skies. Megan, back to you. Thank you, James. And joining us now is Dr. Bob Lehman, a heliophysicist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. So talk to us. Today's total solar eclipse, it's going to look very different from what we saw seven years ago, right? It is, right. The sun is going to look, the solar corona is going to look very cool today. It's going to look cooler than it did last time. Uh, and I mean cool in the sense of wow. Uh, <laughs> not cold. Not, 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 not cold, because the solar corona is like a million degrees. Um, but compared to, to last time, uh, was close to the solar minimum, the minimum amount of magnetic activity sure. on the sun. There's this 11 year or so cycle, and 2017 was closer to minimum, and, and 24, 2024, April 2024 is pretty much close right to the, the maximum of that. So we're going to see the maximum amount of, of dynamism, of, of, of activity, and, and it's going to look, uh, you'll see rays shooting out. Uh, and does that increased activity mean that we have a chance for new discoveries today and increased science? Uh, sure. Um, so in addition to the science that will be done because of the eclipse, just greater activity levels means that we have more chance to see what the sun is going to do, increased radiation levels, uh, increased activity er eruptions that, that, that will affect the, the Earth. Uh, things so, that so how does that affect the Earth and how do we study those effects? What do we have, the tools, the assets to study those effects? Uh, sure. So. In, we call the whole general thing space weather, so we get increased radiation or, or what we call coronal mass ejections, chunks of the sun that blow off and, 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 and hit the Earth. Um, and those affect things like power grids and radio communications and GPS satellites, um, all of which are you know, every, everyday real implications for... for okay, so you all heard that? You hear what he says it can affect? You know, you're a heliophysicist. This is kind of like your Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, pretty so much, yeah. <laughs> you, you are not the first person to say that to me today. <laughs> and, and are we right? Uh, pretty much, yes. I mean, this this is it. I mean, se seven years, and 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 I like to say there's the so the, the, the diving. You know, for the person who asked, I don't remember who it was. 15, 20 years someone ago, said, "Where are they, are they going to see totality? totality. That's going to be in and Texas, yeah, Oklahoma, today, today, Arkansas, to it, Missouri, uh, Illinois, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, Kentucky, we'll Indiana, a, a Ohio, yeah, Pennsylvania, yeah, again, New uh, York, Vermont, really New Hampshire, and Maine." So I know that again, you're okay. Really, uh, in the uh, U.S., a total solar the, eclipse will be the, visible uh, in those states that I named. Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, is, Illinois, Bob, Kentucky, really Indiana, Ohio, so Pennsylvania, right, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Here is Tahira Allen and Kirby, right. Texas, a city so lucky. Here in Atlanta, I think so we're going to get like, we're going to get a partial so definitely, but I think like 85%. Thanks, Megan, and welcome to Kerrville, Texas. I'm Tahira Allen with NASA Communications. And I'm Gina DiBraccio, the Deputy Director of Heliophysics at NASA Goddard. We're live from the Kerrville Eclipse Festival, where tens of thousands are gathering to witness the second solar eclipse that has passed through this town in just six months. Now, this is incredibly rare, and people have traveled from all over the world to share in this spectacular moment right here at a crossroads of the eclipse. Now, Gina, we were lucky enough to be here last year for the right. annular solar eclipse. How does it feel to be back? You know, the annular was such a spectacular experience, but I'm already feeling even more energy today. And it's I'm like so double excited. Crowd. It yeah. is. Yeah. No, and, and we have a full day of celebration in store. You know, the town really turned out for this event. This morning we heard from the mayor and we are surrounded with food and shopping and different activities. I think I saw the Texas State Astronomy Club I here did. giving out free telescope viewing. So it's just a really, really special moment for people to come together and enjoy. And for those of you who missed it, don't today. forget, we had let me uh, turn this volume off for a second. It's yeah, it's good, going back though. and forth. For those of you who missed the video that I did about the solar eclipse, I told you that it's gonna go across, it's gonna cross seven cities named Nineveh. Okay, like the ancient city of Nineveh in the Bible. It's gonna go across seven cities uh, named Nineveh. There's eight cities named Nineveh in the United States. It's going across seven and also across the one in Canada. Okay, so please pay attention. And above the eclipse, as it passes, there's gonna be the constellation of Cetus. Cetus is the symbol of the whale. 
the whale is uh, in the story, the biblical story of Jonah in the Bible. Jonah was sent by God to the ancient city of Nineveh to preach the word to the people and to tell them about the impending destruction if they did not repent of their sins and give atonement. Okay, for those of you who missed it, that was a brief summarization. indirect viewing method like a pinhole projector you can make one of these with something as simple as an index card with a hole or a colander or even your hands with the sun at your back you can safely project an image of the sun through the hole onto a nearby surface like the ground it's gonna be me who is wearing my eclipse glasses and so are you Now, you can't have an eclipse without the sun, the moon, and the earth. And as you heard from Megan and Sarah earlier, we've been hosting a friendly competition right. to see which one of these three teams that you're siding with today. Now, Gina, I feel like it almost goes unsaid here, but I have to ask, I don't, don't want to assume, which team are you repping today? You probably were going to guess sun. Oh, who would have thought? thought? You're right. Now, <laughs> so heliophysics, it's the study of the sun and its influence on everything. And it impacts all of our planets. And today, the solar corona is stealing the spotlight of the show. So team sun for me. I guess it, it really is the star of the show today. But you know what, Gina? I think I'm going to have to be a little bit biased too. Okay. So International Observe the Moon Night, which is NASA's annual celebration of all things moon, actually falls on my birthday this year. Okay. So I think I'm having a little bit of a lunar connection. All right. Team but for those watching, if you haven't joined the fun yet, you can vote for your Eclipse team on NASA Solar System Facebook, X, and Instagram. We're going to be sharing those poll results throughout the show, so be sure to go vote for your team. Now, also during the broadcast, you can send us questions using hashtag Eclipse on social media. We have teams standing by online to answer, and we're going to be taking some of those questions live on today's show. Now, speaking about taking questions live, Gina, we actually yep. have some kids okay. send in videos before today's show. Oh, nice. So let's roll one of those right now. My name is Jonathan. My question is, will NASA do any experiments during the solar eclipse? Thank you. Oh, great question, Jonathan. Now, we have a bunch of different eclipses, uh, experiments that will take place during the eclipse today. So first, we're trying to study the solar corona. So we have NASA's WV-57 High Altitude Research Jet flying across the path of totality, taking pictures of that upper atmosphere of the sun, that corona, so that we can learn its composition, why it gets to be heated to extreme temperatures. But we also care about the eclipse's impact on Earth and the upper atmosphere. So we're launching three sounding rockets up into the atmosphere before, during, and after peak eclipse so that we can study how the atmosphere is changing as well. So, you know, we're studying it with a plane, we're studying it with rockets. Exactly. Any okay. other way? You know, we have balloons, science balloons that are going up too, and we also have different ways that the public will be able to get involved in some of these experiments too. Thanks, Gina, and I actually have a great follow-up question to this. This is from Lisa on Facebook, okay. who wants to know more about the sounding rockets. So they ask, why is NASA shooting rockets into the moon's shadow during today's events? Okay, let's talk more about the sounding rockets because they are a lot of fun. So the, the first sounding rocket will be 45 minutes before peak eclipse, the next one during that peak eclipse, and the, the final one after, 45 minutes after. And that's because we really want to understand the difference in density and temperature and these different factors in in the upper atmosphere and really get a sense of how the atmosphere changes as the eclipse is coming and passes over. So we have all these rockets going up and it'll be a good day for that. Great, and hopefully we'll get to see a replay of that later on in today's show. That's right. Now, folks, it is really special for us to be back here in Kerrville, Texas, covering today's total solar eclipse. Just last October, an annular solar eclipse passed right through this town. Now, for a location to be at the crossroads of these two incredible celestial events is rare. Let's take a look at how the community has been preparing in the lead up to this big day. 
Kerrville is the eclipse capital of the state of Texas. It is known as being the capital of the Texas Hill Country. It's the epitome of Texas. Ranches, deer, beautiful streams like the Guadalupe here. Kerrville is very welcoming. It's a wonderful community. Tight knit, small. It has about 25,000 people. Kerrville is blessed to be in that special square, the annular eclipse in 2023 and the total solar eclipse in 2024. We're talking about crossroads, you know, we get it twice. Two, two eclipses right here, right where I stand. Well, it's statistically extraordinary. We get two in less than six months. Everybody's excited about it. City council, county commissioners, everybody's working diligently to be able to provide safe opportunity for the influx of people. This will be the biggest event in the history of the city. And that's why the city is preparing. We're preparing to make the event enjoyable for everybody who wants to see this tremendous natural phenomenon. I think that Kerrville has done an awesome job preparing, you know, way in advance. It's getting that message out to people to make sure that they're taken care of personally, but then there's the science part of it. Letting them know what is an eclipse. I'm just having a great time going out and talking to civic organizations and clubs and talk about eclipses. So this will be my fourth and fifth solar eclipses. I've seen total eclipse in Nebraska. I drove 1,200 miles for a little over two minutes and it was well worth it. And just couldn't believe the experience of the eclipse. I mean, it's still just, it literally gives me goosebumps every time I talk about it. It's a visceral, emotional experience that is just, you have to, you have to experience it to understand. I thought I knew what it would be like, but I gasped at the sheer wonder. It's gonna be a, oh. <laughs> you're gonna hear that intake of air and ah. Oh. It was the most beautiful natural thing I've ever seen. So to have an eclipse basically in my backyard is just, I, it's indescribable. We're here now with Catherine Troach, a telescope operator with the Night Sky Network, who is giving us these high definition views of the sun that you see in your screen right now, of the eclipse over Kerrville, Texas. Pat, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me, and let's thank the weather for cooperating right. finally, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. And so I'm looking at the, the telescope view that we have, and we have first contact now here yes. in Kerrville. Yes. Okay, so for people who want to become an amateur astronomer, you know, what advice do you have? Where should they get started? The easiest way to get started is to look up Night Sky Network. Night Sky Network has over 400 astronomy clubs in the United States. You would just use our search function to plug in your city and find the club that's closest to you. And if you don't have a club that's close to you, you can use our coordinator tips to start your own astronomy club. Wow, that okay. is awesome. And you know what? For folks, if you want some more details on night, uh, the, night, the Night Sky Network <laughs> and other things on how to become an amateur astronomer, you can visit go.nasa.gov slash Night Sky Network. Now, a fun fact about today's broadcast that I absolutely loved learning was that so many of our telescope views that you're going to be seeing today are from amateur, amateur astronomers. And so, Kat, right. again, on the topic of, you know, sky gazing, I heard that those in the path of totality might be able to witness more than just a total solar eclipse today. Could you yes. give us a sneak peek on what we could expect? Absolutely. So if we have clear skies in the path of totality, as it gets darker, you'll start to see two bright points of light. That would be Jupiter and Venus. Mm -hmm. And then as we get to totality, at totality, you'll be able to see the fainter planets, Saturn, Mercury, and Mars. Wow. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to catch Comet 12P. Oh, wow. what a crazy, like, That's cosmic fun. alignment That's awesome. today, you know? <laughs> So man, great. So for the amateur astronomers that actually want to view today's celestial event, what tips do you have for them? So of course, you need to have solar protection, you need to have solar safe glasses, um, and you need to have solar filter for your telescope, your binoculars, your cameras, but you can also use indirect viewing, like a pinhole projector box, or you can use a disco ball. Oh, a disco oh, ball? Yes. Wait, how does this work? Can you, like, walk sure. us through this? So as the sun hits the mirrors, and it'll cast a little reflection onto the onto the surface here, okay. you'll see little crescent shapes oh, as the eclipse cool. progresses. That is incredible. You need to keep that disco ball. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> no, seriously. So, Gina, didn't you say you could also use your hands at That's one right. point? You know, you can take your fingers and yes. knead them together to let the light project through. So that you 
you can see the projection of the, the eclipse on the ground out there. That's fantastic. So a lot of different ways to be able to view today's there, event. There's no one wrong way to do it. Yes. Unless you're just to do it. That, yeah, yeah. Just to do it. Yeah. Just make sure you do it safely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so Kat, too, you know, earlier we you gave me a little reveal of your shirt. It is too perfect for today's show. You know, could you could you give our give our viewers a little sure. taste? No problem. So yeah. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. So how is it going on at the moment? Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Kat. Thank Thanks, you again Kat. for having me. Absolutely. And so now coming up soon, we're going to get our first views of the total solar eclipse as begins in Mexico, sweeping across North America. Okay, so someone was asking. Respondents all along this path. Hold on. Bringing live into the action as it happens. Okay, Next Alice. Up, let's check in with Joy Young in Dallas, Texas. Someone was asking, do I think the earthquake's going to hit? Well, they've already had several recently. I'm not sure, but I hope not. I'm Joy Ng, and as you can see behind me, we have a lot of people eagerly waiting for the total solar eclipse. <laughs> it's so amazing to hear so many people talk about the sun and the moon, and what makes this day even special is that the eclipse gives scientists a really unique chance to do science. So to tell me more, I'm here with NASA scientist, Dr. Ashley Greeley. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Joy. Thanks for having me. So firstly, how are you feeling about today? I'm feeling really excited. The skies are starting to clear out. It looks like we might get a pretty good show. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So earlier in the show, we learned that today's eclipse will look quite different from the 2017 eclipse. We're going to see more structures in the sun's outer atmosphere. So Ashley, can you tell me why is that different? Why is the sun going to look different and why is it changing? Sure, the sun goes through phases, which we call a solar cycle, that last roughly 11 years. And those are periods where the sun is less active and periods where the sun is more active. We're entering a time of solar maximum, which is really exciting because that means that the sun is more active. Its magnetic fields are, are more dynamic. Uh, we may see features here, such as streamers, which looks like little uh, spiky wisps in the sun's atmosphere, which we call the corona, uh, and then little prominences, which look like little pink arcs on the surface of the sun. Um, yeah, we're really excited to see this, and we, we hope that we'll see some really interesting features. There may be a little bit of asymmetry as well in the, the magnetic fields, and I don't know, I guess we'll have to find out in about an hour. <laughs> so the sun is changing. So do those effects, do those changes affect life on Earth at all? Sure, yes. Uh, the sun does affect life here on Earth. Uh, we have a term that we call space weather, which applies to the field of study of everything from the sun uh, to the Earth and in between and, and how that affects uh, life here. We are fortunate that on Earth, uh, we are protected from, from things coming from the sun by our magnetic fields, which shield us from those explosions that, that come from the surface of the sun that we, we talked about. Um, and those can result in really fun occurrences, such as the aurora. Uh, there can be some negative side effects, but those are mostly limited to things that are outside our magnetic fields. Uh, the, the storms from the sun can interfere with satellites. And it's something we really have to think about as scientists as we, we start to plan for putting humans on the surface of the moon or potentially sending them to Mars. Uh, those energetic particles that result from the sun uh, can impact humans. So that's just something that we have to, to learn about and take into account. So the sun is always there, of course, but why are eclipses a good time to study these effects called space weather? Uh, eclipses are a really cool time uh, for scientists to be able to study the sun. It's actually, it's really hard to completely cover the disk of the sun in order to study the, the sun's atmosphere, especially that inner part of the atmosphere. Uh, we're really fortunate that here on Earth, our moon is just the right size and just the right distance from Earth that it can completely block out uh, the sun's disk during total solar eclipses. Uh, so we're really able to observe that inner atmosphere in a way that we, we can't normally. So this event is really exciting for, for both scientists and the public alike. And that's just such a, a cool experience to share together. Thank you so much, Ashley. So if you're lucky enough to be in the path of totality, keep an eye out for that sun's outer atmosphere, the corona. And, keep, and you'll know that you see these spiky features and it's because the sun is heading towards its most active phase.
funnel is just basically a, a funnel with two host lamps and rear projection film, and it just projects the sun, and we actually capture the picture of totality as that eclipse is happening. And it's pretty cool because it allows other people, instead of having to go through the eyepiece, right. you get to see it. Pretty impressive. Now, Paige, you guys are going to do some observation today. What are you set up for here in Carbondale today? Yes, so we have two telescopes set up with the sun funnels for viewing for a select view of the public. And right now we're pointed at the sun and we're excited to see totality. Now, what are your odds on good weather? Uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm excited. Isn't that great? I'm so excited. I'll tell you what, one final question, because I know you're experts with uh, solar safety, <laughs> but, but Team Earth, Sun, or Moon? We're both Team, team moon. moon. Team Moon, Team Sun. I tell you, that's the bet you're going to get, but we're all pro-Eclipse. Uh, back to you, Tahira. Let's go Team Moon. So, <laughs> as you can see, folks, we've got a lot of exciting things in store all across this country, and that was only half of it. You're going to meet three, mo three more of our locations later on in the show. Now, Gina, we've got a ton of questions coming in online right now from our viewers. Yep. How do you feel about some Q&A? Let's answer some. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. So, our next, the first question is from Bear Cerritos on Instagram, who wants to know, how can I help NASA? You can help NASA by participating in the eclipse. If you can see it today, go outside, enjoy the moment, or download the Globe Observer app. You can do that right now before the eclipse crosses your path. You need a thermometer, and you just record the local temperatures and the cloud coverage. Fantastic Globe Observer app. So thank you so much, Gina, and thank, thank you. you to everybody sending in those questions. We'll take some more later on throughout the show. For now, let's check back in with Megan and Sarah in Cleveland, who are standing by with an out-of-this-world surprise. <laughs> yes, quite literally that to hear of because we have a special treat for our viewers right now. Joining us live in space, 250 miles above the Earth in the International Space Station. Everyone, please help us welcome NASA astronauts Jeanette Epps and Mike Merritt. Sarah, you've been waiting. I'm so excited. <laughs> for oh, this. Hello, everyone. Okay, so let's listen to what the astronauts have to say. Likes up, everyone, please. Be sure to like and share. Thank you in advance. Past will give you guys the best views, and we hope to also share those live views with everyone here on this broadcast around 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, Jeanette, I have two questions for you. Whoa. Are you looking forward to being one of the few people seeing today's total solar eclipse from space? And two, I know your crew member, Matt Dominic, will use a camera with a solar filter to photograph the sun being eclipsed by the moon. Will you also be taking photos of the celestial alignment? Definitely taking pictures of the solar alignment. Um, I, am, I think we're very fortunate to be here at this um, special vantage point to see such a special event <laughs> at this time. So I'm definitely excited. What about you, Mike? What's going through your mind as you're preparing to, to see such an awe-inspiring event? Well, admittedly, I'm a bit of an eclipse junkie. Uh, you know, I, my first one was uh, like when I was 19 with the homemade telescope in the desert and uh, uh, a few since then. And actually during the 2017 eclipse, I was on a, a chartered aircraft uh, several hundred miles off the coast of Oregon watching it. And uh, I got a strange bucket list and this is one of the things that's on it to actually watch a, an eclipse shadow across the earth from space. So I'm ecstatic to see this box get checked and, and just to, to see this amazing thing from up here. Yeah, the fact that that was actually a box yeah. on your list is pretty <laughs> amazing. amazing. And then now it's getting checked. So, you know, for those wondering, this is what the moon's shadow will look like to Jeanette and Mike. Uh, we're going to show you video taken from the space station of the total solar eclipse in 2017. And you can clearly see the shadow moving across the top of your screen there from left to right. We actually sped up the video so you can see more of that transit. This would look a lot slower to them. But really cool. Jeanette, eclipses give us a unique opportunity to study the sun and how it affects the earth. Can you tell us about the atmospheric waves experiment attached to the outside of the space station right now? I got it. 
Sure. Um, we have an atmospheric wave experiment that's going on now, and what it looks at are these atmospheric gra gravity waves, and these waves transport energy and momentum up through the climate system. So, with the imager, with the imager on the atomic wave experiment, we're going to look at how these atmospheric gravity gravity waves impact our Earth's climate, how it can impact our our space and global and all of our comms, how it can affect our navigation system. And so over the next two years, researchers will use a, an infrared imager to look at the global distribution of these waves as well as their characteristics. Mike, how does it... How does it feel to have a hand in maintaining the space station so that important uh, science like the atmospheric waves experiment can happen? Well, of course, uh, the main reason we're up here is actually to conduct that science. We maintain the station to, uh, to keep this platform what it should be, what it was built to be, which is a vibrant uh, laboratory. Uh, which covers so many different disciplines on the inside and the outside, like the gravity waves experiment. I mean, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege, as much as anything, to have a hand in that science. And we end up being basically... Uh, King Leo, I think we're going to get like 85% here, okay? Uh, we're going to get a partial eclipse. I believe like 85%, uh, if I'm not mistaken, beloved. Uh, scientific teams on the ground. So that's really where the joy is. Uh, maintaining the station is just like maintaining a research ship. Uh, something I actually uh, quite like, uh, so I feel very much at home in that uh, in that role. It's still blowing my mind. I mean, we're here in Cleveland, Ohio, live. You guys are up in space in the International Space Station. I can't believe the opportunity that uh, has been afforded to us, and I hope our viewers really enjoyed uh, this time with you, and I hope you enjoy the show from up there. We do want to close by saying, uh, first of all, we really enjoy being here, but everybody stay safe uh, and use the simple means to protect your eyes as you look at the eclipse, as uh, Jeanette and I are modeling here, which makes us blind as a bat on the inside, but uh, solar protected on the outside. So we encourage everyone to do the same. Really great advice from both of them. Thank you so Thank much. You Sarah and I have our glasses right. and we're ready, ready to go. To. Also blind <laughs> if we don't do this. <laughs> All right, again, Jeanette, Mike, thank you so much. And we actually have some time to take questions from the audience. We have hashtag clips. That's how you can send questions to us. So let us take a video from another Curious Kids Stop Watching. Hi, my name is Agent. And my question is, why will we not see a total eclipse in California? Thank you. That's a great question, Adrian. So we only a precious few today are going to get to see a total eclipse because the moon is so much smaller than the Earth. It only casts a very narrow shadow. But still, even in California, you're going to get to see a partial eclipse, and that is still a really cool event. So I do encourage you to get out there uh, and see it for yourself today. Yeah, absolutely. So again, hashtag eclipse. Wherever you're watching us, drop that in the comments, and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can on the show. Okay, so we have obviously people celebrating with us online uh, and at events across the country. So why don't we check out some of those events again now? Waco, Texas again. People look very, very comfortable in their camping chairs and spread out on picnic blankets. Yeah, huh? it looks like they're having a good time. Yeah. A few clouds. A few clouds, but again, they have some time there before. Kennedy Space Center, they will see a partial eclipse. We have some people walking around the Rocket Garden. Oh, it looks like they have beautiful weather there. California Academy of Sciences, yes, they do. They have <laughs> clear skies. We're very, very jealous over here. And then the Mentor Civic Amphitheater that's starting to... It's starting to fill up. Exactly. There were fewer people when we checked in ago, but now lots of people there and lots of people at the Adirondack Sky Center. I wish I could wave and say hello. <laughs> they look like they're getting they're getting ready for some stuff though yeah absolutely again the snow cleared out because yeah. there was snow over the weekend but now it looks like a beautiful probably still crisp day there for them okay and now we're back here with astronaut steve bone who's looking around taking in the sights steve, I I see. It's just an amazing amount of people it's really cool to see yeah
Oh, I'm sorry. I had myself muted. Okay, so here's what it says about Florida. Hold on. It says, roughly speaking, in Florida, the peak of the partial eclipse will start about 1.55 p.m. CDT in Pensacola and about 3.02 p.m. EDT on Miami. Okay? And so please pay attention. And then Tallahassee at about 3 p.m. EDT. All right? So Eastern. Uh, with that all being said, for, for whomever that was that asked about Florida. Hundia, Queen, will, will Florida be able to? Yes. Okay? I just gave you all the times, beloved. Yeah, so you all will see it in Florida. If you're in Louisiana, you may have already missed it. Um, hold on. Let me make sure. Okay, so it says in Louisiana, they're going to see it at about, weather permitting, around 12.25 p.m. Okay, 12.25 p.m., my mistake. Okay. Let me just double check. Yeah, that's what it says. Okay, now I can't keep looking up where y'all gonna see it. Y'all gonna have to Google some of this stuff yourselves. All right. Indianapolis Motor Speedway winner 
Alexander Ross. Sorry, I was preoccupied and forgot to turn the mic the uh, audio, audio back on. Helio figure is a celebration of sun science and how the sun touches everything, including IMS. So tell me. Uh, the track when you're doing wow. a flying round is about four minutes long, which coincidentally is the length of totality. So tell us, what is it like being on the track? You know what? The uh, the sun plays a huge role in determining the performance of the car um, based on the track conditions. So we actually, when it's a day like this, as much as it's beautiful for the fans, it's actually very difficult for us as drivers because as the surface heats up, the oils come to the top of the asphalt and it actually becomes slippier. So that's surprising to people. They think the temperature would mean grip, but it, it is until a certain point. And then once it kind of crosses over 100 degrees on the surface, you start to actually go the other way. Wow, and tell me about those tires. How does the sun affect those? So when they're, so we use slick tires. So Firestone tires are slick. Um, on a road car, you have tread, right? Because they're so supposed to use in all conditions. Slick tires actually have a bigger contact patch, more surface area, so they generate more grip at a temperature, right? So they operate between 180 to 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, again, the sun is good until a point when they go over that 230 degree mark, you start to lose that grip again. Ooh, all right. Well, we have a little competition going on today. We're trying to determine whose big day is it? Is it the sun's, the moon's, or the earth's? So my question to you is, are you team sun, team moon, or team earth? That's a, that's a hard one, but I'm going to go team earth. You know, I just think we're so lucky, especially today with the people that are around us here to be able to witness what we're about to see. Um, go earth. Go earth. You heard it here first. All right, guys, thanks. We'll be back here. Daryl in Niagara, over to you. All right, thank you very much, Lauren. Just 500 miles northeast of you. We are here at Niagara Falls, right next to the Niagara River. This is a special location for a lot of people because it is a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a natural wonder set against a celestial one, the solar eclipse. And so let's talk first of all about the natural wonder. And it all starts right here. Look at this massive river and the amount of water that's moving through here. A half million gallons of water, half a million bathtubs actually going over the falls at every 60 seconds. It's tremendous the flow here. It interacts with the air, it hits the rocks. And it okay, so guys, I'm gonna let you see the eclipse in South Africa that they just showed on TikTok. Okay, so please pay attention. I'm gonna switch screens gonna show you the one in south africa likes up everyone please like and share don't forget to get those likes up thank you here we go this is on tiktok oh my god guys wow this is an amazing view to see the the eclipse oh my god watch this Amazing. All right. That was beautiful. Okay, that was absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now let's go back to the other share. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Well, they posted it today. They said it was 2024, beloved. They said that was from 2024. Morris Sam says, have they shot the rockets yet? Let's check and see.
Okay, so here's what they say. They say the rockets are supposed to launch at 2.40 p.m., 3.20 p.m., and 4.05 p.m., okay? But that could be subject to change, okay? So that's what they say. Said we do excellent weather here in Maine today. We've been here for a couple of days, and it's actually been pretty wintry right up until about yesterday. We had snow. It was pretty cold. But you know what? Today, the sun is out. The skies are blue, and it's looking like perfect conditions for an eclipse, or as the Mainers would say, wicked good weather. Now, we're actually standing here in Market Square in Maine, and we are outside of the Temple Theater, where it has actually been in operation since 1919. Over the last 150 years of its operation, it's seen everything from silent films to burlesque shows, and today, it's got a more celestial show with the eclipse. Now, the last eclipse to come through Maine was actually in 1963, and that eclipse was only visible for about a minute. In contrast, today's eclipse will be visible for at least just about three minutes or so, so everyone here is going to have a lot of time to take in the celestial show, really soak in the event. And the next eclipse won't be coming through Maine until 2079, so it makes a lot of sense that we've got a lot of people here really excited to see this once in a generation opportunity and event. We're all excited. I know everybody here is excited. So we'll be here waiting for the moment that we've all been waiting for, the eclipse. With that, back over to you, Megan. Hey, thank you, everyone. It was really cool to see everyone along the path of totality. You can tell we're covering a large swath of land because everybody's in different kind of attire. <laughs> you know, you have short sleeve shirt somewhere, and then you have like Daryl, who's <laughs> who it looks very, very cold, and he does have some cloud cover. So I hope that it does kind of clear out for him. I, figure, I feel like we've covered all of those levels of weather over the last day. That's now. true. Here in Cleveland, <laughs> in Cleveland. So, but it's looking nice now, so that's great. And actually, if you uh, were watching our screen here, we just had uh, a view of the uh, eclipse in in uh, Mazatlan, Mexico, in about 10 minutes, that's when we'll start seeing totality in that area. And in that... This is in Junction, Texas, beloveds. Okay, so we're going to switch again. Moment together. Some great advice. Thank you so much. All right, we have time for other hashtag Eclipse questions. Sarah, are you right? I am absolutely right. All right, let's take a look at this video from a familiar face. Hey everyone, I'm Scarlett Johansson and I play a NASA public affairs director in the new film, Fly Me to the Moon. I hope everyone is safely enjoying today's eclipse. I actually have a question about the moon for NASA. So during a total solar eclipse, I've heard that craters and features on the moon play a role in what viewers see on Earth when the moon blocks the sun. So why is that? Good Scarlet. So yeah, as we, you know, the moon isn't isn't a smooth marble. It actually has big high mountains and, and valleys, these craters. And as we approach totality, sometimes you'll hear people talk about Bailey's beads. And these are the last few moments of sun creeping through those those deep valleys yeah. uh, just before we hit totality. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's so great to have you here to answer some of these questions. And we plan to take more. If you send them in, hashtag eclipse again.
Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm NASA's Megan Cruz, and this is NASA lunar scientist Sarah Noble. And as you can see, you are watching the official NASA broadcast for today's total solar eclipse. And we are in the heart of downtown Cleveland, where NASA is celebrating this celestial alignment. Take a look at our shot from the air. That is how many people who are just here at the Great Lakes Science Center alone. So many more spread out throughout Cleveland, because again, the last time this city had a total solar eclipse was 1806. But again, just down the road, we have the only NASA center in the path of totality. When it comes to NASA, I think a lot of people initially think of rocket launches in Cape Canaveral or astronauts floating above the Earth in the International Space Station. But there's a lot of research, engineering, and testing that needs to happen before anything can fly. And we have those capabilities, supersonic wind tunnels, microgravity drop towers, vacuum chambers, and a research aircraft hangar. And that's why people from all over the world come to NASA's Glenn Research Center right here in Cleveland, Ohio. What we work on, power, propulsion, communications, you need it for anything that flies. We like to say the road to the moon goes through Ohio, and that's because our test facilities are crucial to advancing the Artemis program. Part of our vision for going back to the moon and establishing a sustainable presence is having a lunar gateway, a lunar space station that flies successfully around the moon and sustain astronauts there. And we are leading the program that's developing the power and propulsion element. NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky, Ohio. It's the only place in the world where you can test a full-size spacecraft for all the extreme conditions of launch and spaceflight. Right now, we have the Orion spacecraft. This is a spacecraft that actually went around the moon, but we're using it as a test article now to make sure that in the launch environment, You are all in my business. Okay, above all that drama, you are all in my business. No, I'm not vaping. Okay, I'm not vaping. This is a peppermint stick. Okay, don't even try it. How ghetto is that? These are peppermints. <laughs> Stop trying to mind my business and watch this starting clip. Why don't you? April April says 
she don't vape. Exactly, beloved. Thank you. <laughs> All in my business. more. You can do that at some point today. And also, for those of you who collect stones and crystals, okay, make sure you put them outside today so they can recharge during this powerful energetic, okay, uh, solar eclipse. Put them outside sometime today so they can recharge. Aboriginal woman, please tell them. Thank you, DJ Big Six. the moon's energy later. Yes, Juju, beloved. <laughs> You're welcome above all that drama. Thank you. 
the wig, wig too. too. Going to copy the moon water too. You all are terrible. This is Kerrville, Texas, beloved, that we're looking at. Kerrville, Texas. I'm going to switch for a second. Hold on. I got to switch for a second. That's Mexico. Now let's go back to Texas. her golden weave <laughs> for out, out for charging. <laughs> you are terrible. Yes, Skeletor fan, use spring water, distilled water, or purified water. Spring water, distilled water, or purified water. Okay? Likes up, everyone. Please don't forget to get the likes up. Thank you. Doesn't cost you a thing. Our new girls official said, what do you do with, with moon water? You can use it to soak your, uh, to cleanse your stones in it, to give them more powerful energy. Um, some people drink it. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for. If you have an altar where you give praises and thanks to the ancestors, you can use it for that too. You can give it, uh, put it on the altar for the ancestors. Okay? You can use it for manifesting, for your manifestation. And I love you, right? Black King Bray. Thank you, beloved. Stacey said you have some. Okay, great. Wow, really? I have to look into that, beloved. Not their final curtain call. <laughs> yes, April. Thank you, beloved. Moderators, please put the link uh, moderators, could you please put the link for the spiritual channel in the chat, please, beloveds? Thank you. Look at that. That is absolutely amazing. This is Kerrville, Texas, once again. You're welcome, Deronda. Thank you, beloved. I'm going to send you an email uh, with a time and date, okay? Thank you, beloved. I appreciate you. Thank you, Claudette. I love you, too. Oh, let's switch real quick. Let's switch.
This is Mexico. You're welcome, I beloved. Love it. Let's switch. This is Texas again. There's never a wrong time, Danielle. You make it whenever you choose. It's best to make it when they have a full moon, anytime there's a full moon, or when we have celestial events, such as this solar eclipse, beloved. All right, Juju. Let's switch again. I'm going back and forth. They got their glasses ready. Pay attention. They've got their glasses ready. Thank you, all hell no. Said preparing your water. Above all that drama, said outstanding broadcast queen. Thank you, beloved. Okay, here we go. Let's get back to the share. Let's go back to NASA and see what they're up to. I think this is NASA too, actually. Okay, they're showing a different part of Mexico. They're showing Torreon, Mexico. We're gonna go to that. There it is right there. This is Torreon, Mexico. They just, they're in a different part. Thank you, African Osiris or Osiris Code. Thank you, beloved.
Absolutely, Queen Shay. Absolutely, it is, beloved. Asset Raw, Asset Raw, or Asset Raw, that's how much we're expecting in Atlanta, too, beloved. Like 85, 80 to 85%. Wow, that is so amazing. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. to the sky absolutely and tell me is this your first eclipse it's not my first eclipse but it will be my first totality i've seen several partial eclipses but there's something mystical and mysterious and in some ways unifying 
about a total eclipse and we're all going to feel it together. Absolutely. We could not have lucked out more on this weather today. So as a former astronaut, we know that sun science and space weather are very important to keeping our astronauts safe. What is um, space weather and why do we care? Claudette, that triple numbers are angel numbers, yeah, beloved. It's actually very important. It is of concern for astronauts who are in space because they experience the radiation of the sun that comes Triple from numbers are angel numbers. And solar weather. Could be a message or a sign from the most high or from an ancestor. Please pay attention. It or your spirit the guide. The reaches of our atmosphere are called the ionosphere, which is an electrified part of our atmosphere that is a conduit for communications. Um, it's, it's critically important. It can even affect power grids. And of course, if you ever have seen the Northern Lights, you've seen the effect of solar weather. So, but really the focus for today is where that solar weather starts. And that's in the Corona, the sun's atmosphere. It's very unusual and we don't exactly know what's happening because the sun's atmosphere is millions of degrees hotter than the surface of the sun. So we are hoping to learn today more about how that happens and why that happens so that we can better predict those solar flares and those things that impact us here on Earth. Yeah, that's all You're welcome, extremely beloved. important and something that we're learning a lot today too. Pam, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. As we've learned, solar eclipses are very important to learn for many, many reasons. We have radio telescope operators who are studying the eclipse today for this very reason. Let's take a look at that work. When the moon blocks the sun during a solar eclipse, there is a noticeable impact on Earth's upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere. These changes can affect radio communications, including amateur radio, also known as ham radio. Ham radio is a way you can talk to people all around the world. You set up a radio and antenna. You talk into the radio, the radio sends a signal up to the antenna, the antenna sends the signal up to the sky, it bounces off of the electrified layer of the sky, back down to Earth where you can talk to the person on the other side. During the 2024 total solar eclipse, the HamSci Citizen Science Project is inviting ham radio operators to transmit radio signals. The goal is to have people make as many radio contacts as they can with operators in different locations during the celestial event. By recording how strong their radio signals are and how far they go, ham radio operators and scientists Okay, so we're minutes away from the total eclipse over Texas. Almost time for the total eclipse. Obviously, everybody is excited, but have you seen a total solar eclipse before? Never a total, so I will share this darkness with you. Same. Wow, this is incredible. So, you know, what considerations do you and your fellow Artemis astronauts need to think about when related to the sun when traveling back to the moon? Well, it's great to see uh, Pam Melroy on your last clip. Uh, a dear friend of mine, so it's nice to see Pam's face over there. But when we're heading out to the sun, it's really radiation is our big mm -hmm. thing that we're, the, I'm sorry, we're heading out to the moon. Yeah. It's really <laughs> the those solar radiation yeah. that we're most thinking about there as the day. Just the minutes sun, away. The sun and the Apollo astronaut. I'm going to switch again really quick. This is Russellville, Arkansas. Knowledge and professionalism. It's a dream come true. Russellville, Arkansas. International team. 
best. Wow. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, Reed. You know, really quickly, do you have any advice for anybody that might want to follow in your footsteps one day? Uh, we always say that you have to find that job that you love, go all in on it, live your best life, be as good a professional as you can, and someday apply for the program. And we look forward to seeing your application come across our desk. Thank you, Reed, and good luck on thank your you. upcoming thank mission. You. Thank you, right here. Now, if anybody feels like reaching for the stars, NASA is actually currently accepting applications to be an astronaut. You could one day travel to the moon and eventually to Mars. From teachers to scientists to even those in our armed forces, we are looking for a diverse group to take huma to humanity farther. Switching again really quick. We're about two minutes away from total eclipse totality. Totality. About two minutes away. Pay attention. To be here with Dr. Nicola Fox who is the Associate Administrator of NASA Science Mission Directorate. Nikki, thank you for being here. Oh, I, I wouldn't be anywhere else. Thanks for being here, Nikki. So tell us how the science conducted today will really impact the future of exploration at NASA Science. Oh, wow, there's so much that we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to be studying the sun. We're going to be studying the Earth's atmosphere and how that changes. You can see it getting dark here. And, um, you know, we've got, we've got these little magnetometers that are going to be all across. We have 30 of them all the way across. Um, that I'm going to hold it up. Very nice. Love magnetometers. Magnetometers. And um, we're going to we're gonna be having these all the way across the path of totality. And it sounds it's like we're going to get up. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. All right. Glasses on, Yes. Yeah, glasses on, but we're about to get glasses on. Well, okay. Yeah. There's some cloud yeah, the coverage. Yeah, there's some cloud coverage. It's huh? trying to peek it out. It is though. trying. It is trying. It is trying. Wind it is getting dark sure. here. The wind's picked up. You could actually see the birds started flying in a very weird yes, pattern a minute too. ago. There it is!
Oh my god, they're gonna be so proud of that. Yes! And we have about what four minutes? Oh yeah, four minutes fast and twenty-five seconds to be. This is gonna be just like four minutes. Remind you that we are on this one planet, you know, in this larger system. It's and you have to be on this planet to see what we're seeing. You do. That's why we are Team Sun. No, beloved, I don't think so. Because when you need the moon for an eclipse, you need the sun for an eclipse. Someone standing on the Earth to see it. Oh man, so. All of NASA science represented by a total solar eclipse. And something that what? Over 30 million of us today, at least. Yeah, at, at least. least. Yeah. At least, yes. I mean, yeah. yeah. The I don't know about living mm -hmm. in the part of totality. So Doesn't imagine how many travels. people actually traveled here. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yes. This wow. is getting me extra excited about all the science. That all the science we're that we're doing. Yeah. And let me say yeah. shout out to everyone and thank you for those who sent Cash App donations. This channel isn't monetized, but I thank you all for the Cash App donations, beloved. I appreciate you. So dark. It is. It is so dark. I'm so happy that you have to that travel. Yeah. Able to see this take place. Right. And, and it's so been so such meeting. a great atmosphere here all day. Every yes. time the sun comes out, everybody and cheers. Everybody's cheering, yeah. counting down. It has been incredible. And so, wow, that's true. Oh, Nikki, what's your favorite part about this? About an eclipse? Is this, is this your first? No, this is my second one. Uh, 2017, um, I was in Nebraska, mm -hmm. and I saw it there. But I think there's just, it's, you can, you can study the sun, you can study the corona, but suddenly you see it with your own eyes. And it's yeah. that feeling of, of just, wow, that is our star. Like that isn't just, it's just not just the sun anymore. That's a star and you see it looking like a star. And, you know, as we study, um, you know, as we look for um, exoplanets in other galaxies that might be able to support life, you know, we need to understand our relationship here on this planet with that star. And so it's just, it's so important. And I think when you see it, you're just like, wow, it actually is a star. You know, it's not just a bright point of light in the sky. You can see the structure. You can see uh, just how exciting the, the sun is and actually how dynamic it is. Yeah. And you know, it's not often in heliophysics that we can actually see the science that we're doing with our own eyes. That is right. So it's that a is rare right. experience. Yeah. Or even share it, you know, yeah. millions of us. Gonna switch again. Okay, let's go back to NASA. Bright one light, and then then it all went dark. So um, we did actually see uh, quite a few great um, great features on the sun, and somebody actually was, was saying they could see a sunspot. Um, obviously through their yes, glasses, yes. but they can see a sunspot. So, yeah. so, can you clarify what the sunspots are for our viewers? Yes, absolutely. So when you when you if you were looking through your glasses, you might have seen a couple of dark spots on the sun. 
Um, they are actually very intense places. There's very, very intense magnetic field there. They're very active, and that is what can cause um, space weather. So every, every now and again, those active regions can sort of explode and then send billions of tons of solar material towards our planet. Wow. Well, this was fantastic. Thank you so much, Thank Nikki. This was incredible to experience this with you. Let's follow this clip right up that path. Next up is Dallas. We have Joy and Michael standing by for their big moment in the sun. Yeah, yeah. You can feel the temperature change. The wind is completely quieted down. Yeah. So the energy here is amazing. So with me right now is Dr. Michael Kirk. He's one of our eclipse experts. Michael, we saw an annual eclipse back in October, but yes. today is a total eclipse. How are you feeling today? It is totally different. I am ecstatic. It, the annual eclipse was really cool. This is, you can feel it, the energy here is electric. If you look around, you can see that the, the darkness is coming. Um, let's have a quick look at what we're looking at right now. We're almost there. We're a couple of minutes away. Yep, just a crescent left. So let's quickly talk about um, some of the ways that the public are participating in the eclipse right now. Yes. Michael, can you talk about some of the citizen science projects? Yes, there are people all around the country right now making measurements of audio of recordings to see how the environment is changing. And it is a great opportunity to do genuine science with just an audio recording. Fantastic. So we are almost like, um, let's see, a few minutes away. So, minute 30 out, I think, actually. Um, so, let's have a look at the eclipse. Michael, what should we expect to see moments before totality? Okay, so as we approach totality, you're going to see that crescent sun slowly drift away, and then you're going to see the Bailey's beads, where there are these bright points of light that are last bits of sunlight cascading through the moon valleys, and then right before totality you'll see a diamond ring that last single point of light and then we'll be in totality we just have a thumbnail of sun left it is we are closing in on totality here wow we see a sliver of the sun left remember you can only take your safety glasses off when the moon has completely covered the sun and in dallas texas we are seconds away oh my goodness i can feel my heart racing you can hear the crowd getting excited the birds are chirping and they seem like they're going into their nighttime routines wow so we are oh. almost we are a few seconds away you can hear the crowds cheering here we go oh my goodness here this it comes really ecstatic gonna be completely covered over dallas here we are just a few seconds, ten left. seconds. there it is 10 seconds <laughs> count down oh i'm so excited okay we are five seconds away from totality <laughs> one little bit it's totally dark here deep twilight around there it here. is you can hear the crowd so the last bit of light there it and is we're in totality look at yes. that oh my god oh my god that is absolutely breathtaking oh my god Michael. <laughs> how are you feeling right now i i am just awestruck i mean the there's a few high clouds but the beauty of the corona is clearly visible can see that spiky structure just poking out. Um, it is heart stopping with you. Oh my goodness, I have tears in my eyes. I was not expecting this. <laughs> this is one of those experiences that you just never forget. Um, I, I feel so special to be right here, right now, experiencing it um, and knowing that people literally across the nation are doing the same thing is uh, it's truly amazing. Let's take a moment take it all in. This is absolutely breathtaking. Wow. You can see that spiky structure of the corona. That's indicative of, of, of our approach to solar maximum. That asymmetrical uh, nature of the corona happens when we're in solar maximum. That's going to be happening in about a few months from now. So that means that this view of the corona will never happen again, ever. This is a completely unique view that even if you see a million solar eclipses, you'll never quite see one like this. So Michael, you study the sun. What is it like to see the corona that you don't normally see? I mean, I, I just, there are no words. Um, I spent my life studying this thing. And to be able to see it and feel it is, 
I mean, it's just tremendous. Um, you can see a, a prominence um, in the chromosphere, the, the middle atmosphere of the sun is a pink spot. And that, that pink loop is what I spent five years doing a dissertation on. <laughs> that, that one little pink loop. And it, it's just, it makes it all feel like it's in perspective now. I can't believe how clearly I can see those pink loops. And we the can structures see, in the corona. We can see a few planets out as well. Um, they're, they're bright. like it's almost raining or uh, you can see the shadow bands racing across the ground um, as we come back in out of totality. Wow. Whew. Oh my goodness, Michael, that was amazing. I was not expecting to feel so emotional. I still have tears in my eyes. It, I mean, it just grabs you. I mean, it, it is unlike anything else. It's as amazing as seeing anything in the natural universe. I just, I, yeah, like I said, there are no words. Michael, thank you so much for being with us in this very, very, very special moment. I feel honored to be here. We truly are in a special place in the entire universe, right here, and I, I'm just so happy to share it with you. So now, let's head back to James at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, who's with the Eclipse Moon. He's tracking the shadow moving across the U.S. James, how are things looking on your end? Yeah, wow, Joy and Michael, really cool view there. It's insane to see just how dark it gets. It's literally like nighttime there. You can hear the birds chirping in that shot as well. And the garden's absolutely beautiful. We've got a bunch coming up in just a few moments here. Our next eclipse path target here for the NASA broadcast is in Russellville, Arkansas. They're going to have a long window, too. Four minutes and 12 seconds. They're expecting that totality kickoff at 1.50.05 to be exact. Again, you can continue to track this with our eclipse tool here. This is at go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipse explorer you can see just how quickly it's moving i'm playing this in real time you can see that shadow it's already moving very quickly to the northeast and the fun isn't just for our friends on the path of totality and there are a lot of people on that path of totality about 31 million people reside somewhere on that path of totality but there's a lot of people obviously outside of that path as well too if i put on this overlay here for the percent coverage a lot of folks us included here in florida are experiencing that partial eclipse as always if you are in a partial eclipse be sure to be wearing those eclipse glasses to protect your eyesight as you're viewing it but you can see these bands here are greater than 75 percent view so say you're watching up in i don't know milwaukee here for example you've got a great view almost 100 percent coverage you're not quite at totality 89.4 percent looks like you got good cloud cover there 20 percent cloud cover so hopefully you got a nice view up there as well too i've also put on this overlay here to show you just the amount of the duration of totality you see a lot of our places are within this middle band right 
right here that are getting more than four minutes. It may seem like a lot of time, but as you've seen, just how quickly that can go by. Michael, it sounds like he wrote his whole dissertation, a five-year piece on those just few moments there. This just passes so quickly. And again, if you miss this, the next time you're going to have to wait for this in the U.S. is not going to be until 2045. So again, make sure you're previewing exactly when to expect that peak time of coverage wherever you are in our path of totality or even outside of the path of totality so a lot coming up very soon again our friends in russellville look like they have great coverage there as well too only nine percent cloud cover so hopefully they're getting a really nice view but let's check in with jasmine up there to see hopefully you're looking good for there how's it looking up in your way up in russellville Everything is looking absolutely fabulous here in Russellville. We could not have asked for better weather. So we are back here in the downtown depot area. Joining us now is heliophysics expert, Dr. Patrick Kane, all the way from DC. How are you feeling about your very first total solar eclipse? I'm incredibly excited. As, I, as I'm watching all of the changes, there go the crowd. I, as I'm watching all of the changes, I'm thinking back to the textbooks that I've read, and this is so this was all academic before. This is no longer academic. Yeah, so the feeling is very different than what we might read in a textbook. Patrick, just explain, you know, describe the atmosphere around us as it's changing. Uh, and right now, even if you can't see it, you can still put your water out, beloved, okay? You can still put your water out. The light is dimming, and it's dimming faster and faster and faster. It seems like it's, it's, it's accelerating. Um, the crowd is definitely getting excited. Uh, I'm, I'm looking around the ground to see if I see the shadow snakes. I don't, but this is just really exciting. It really is. Honestly, like you said, we're feeling that cooler weather. Yeah. The crowd behind us just erupted. We're also feeling them fall a little bit quieter, too. Right. So we're going to take a, a Thank you, Claudette, beloved. Thank as you. As we get into totality, I think we're, we're less than about 15 seconds away. So we're going to also look over our shoulder with yep. our You're welcome, crowd beloved. Still on until we are in totality. Here we go. Just a sliver of the sun left. Russellville, Arkansas. That to be in complete totality. Yeah, all around us, completely electric. Going. Going. Wow. Oh my goodness. Here we are. Here we go. And wild. And the cloud goes wild. Oh my. Wow. We got some Bailey beads. Oh, Absolutely stunning. That is spectacular. We see Venus over to the, <laughs> over the side there. And Patrick, it came and went so quickly, but we did see a diamond ring we did at the very <laughs> beginning there. Can you describe to us what is that? Sure, that, that diamond ring effect is due to the, the moon not being perfectly smooth. It's got mountains, it's got valleys. So just like here on Earth, when we see a sunrise or a sunset through a valley, we just watch the sunset uh, 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 through a valley on the moon. Absolutely stunning. Oh my. So you said we can see one planet. I see it right there in the yep. sky. Can we see yep. any other that we're looking at? Yeah, we've got Venus on on the over to one side. We've got Jupiter up here uh, to the left of the sun, and there's the Corona. Absolutely beautiful. That is spectacular. Now you also said that this is happening during what we're calling a solar maximum. Now, Patrick, does that mean that the sun is stronger right now than normal? And not so much stronger, just more dynamic. It's changing a lot. Uh, uh, during solar maximum, the, the magnetic field on the, on the sun is, is more chaotic, it's more disorganized. So you see more random, random directions for the for the, the jets of gas leaving the sun. Right. That is spectacular. We can see a, a, a All right, we are reaching wow. that halfway mark already, two minutes into totality. There's even just a hint of a diamond ring down at the bottom. I can see it. Yeah, we're looking at a diamond ring from Arkansas, the Diamond State. Now, Patrick, of course, as we've been talking about it, this is part of what we are calling the Heliophysics Big Year. You are a Heliophysics extraordinaire all the way from Washington, D.C. So what does that mean? Okay, so the Heliophysics Big Year started out in October of last year with the annular eclipse. 
and and uh, of course we, we take a pause here in the middle to, to, to watch this particular eclipse but then it will end on December 24th of 2024 when Parker Solar Probe passes as close as it's ever going to get to the surface of the sun within nine solar radii. Oh wow and I'm sure that means a lot to you because you worked on Parker Solar Probe about 20 years ago during its inception so tell us a little bit more about that. I worked on, the, on a concept study for Parker Solar Probe back when I was a graduate student uh, in around 2002 or so and and back then the idea was for it to actually dive into the sun rather than orbit the sun so it was going to be a sun dive wow that is fabulous this must be a very full circle moment for you this, right, is, this, is, brilliant. this is absolutely brilliant and that that diamond ring has been persistent wait a minute that's pink what we are actually seeing is down into the chromosphere now oh, wow. of, of the sun we're seeing a little bit deeper than than the corona i, I believe i believe it's a, a, because of the pinkish color we're looking down into the chromosphere which is the next layer of the atmosphere of the sun down oh wow wow <laughs> This is like nothing we have ever seen here in Arkansas and like nothing we will see uh, for the next two decades. Right, Patrick? That's right. It's going to be 21 years before we see it again here. 2045. All right. So as we are starting to exit the totality, of course, we're going to be very careful uh, with our eyes as needed. Uh, we're going to put those solar glasses back on, of course. And the crowd just erupting, falling quiet again as they watch this magnificent wow. moment. I imagine seeing bats splitting through the air. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, we will be very careful then. <laughs> well, yeah. And why is that, Patrick? Again, those nocturnal animals are, are coming out. Right? As far as night. they're concerned, it's nighttime. It's time to feed. So they're coming out to feed on all the mosquitoes we've been swatting. Okay, got it. We'll be very careful for, for all those uh, nocturnal critters around us right now. All right. We are getting closer. Get ready to put the glasses back on. All right, all right. On. We're putting those glasses back on. The oh, is, oh, oh, wow. A second diamond ring seen from right here in Arkansas, the Diamond State. Absolutely stunning. Outstanding. Beautiful. Patrick, we're going to turn around now and just uh, one question I, I really do have to ask before we let you go is, are you Team Sun, I, Moon, or Earth? I am Team Sun. Team Sun all day long. Fantastic. I figured from a heliophysics expert like you, we want to thank the city of Russellville for hosting us, Arkansas Tech University, and our telescope feed operator, Joe Mattis. Thank you so much. Now, let's get back to James Traley over at Kennedy Space Center. James, back to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Jasmine. What have you guys had there? So you were just right here in Russellville. You can see that shadow has now officially moved off and is on our way to our next target, which is up here in Carbondale. Carbondale is one of those very lucky cities because back in 2017, they were right at that intersection point of the 2017 eclipse across America. They're there again this year, but the difference is they're gonna have a much longer slot. In 2017, they only had two minutes, 40 seconds. Mm. That's not as much as they're gonna have this year, which is four minutes and 10 seconds in the totally eclipsed sun. A really great viewing window for them to really take in this big moment. Very exciting to be able to track that for them as well. And also some details about this tool here as well. If I click onto their eclipse time here at 159.15 local time, you notice this little icon comes up here. This is actually simulated based off real data from the Parker Solar Probe, but what we expect the corona around the sun to look like. And as you just heard, the sun's a lot more active this time around. It's kind of like a, a, like a wild hairball, if you will. Lots of different streamers and things streaking off the sun. So you've been seeing already in our coverage some really cool activity around that sun's corona. If you're really lucky and the timing is just right, you might get a coronal mass ejection streaking off the sun. Hoping that someone on our path gets to see that today. If you do, be sure to send us the photos. We'd love to see that as well. One other cool feature about this tool too is you can see the actual path that the moon is going to be taking across the sun. And all of this plays in real time if you time it up well. And so you can actually see if I go to our live moment here, this is actually playing as what we're expecting in real time, the movement of the moon across the sun. Carbondale just had a little crescent there, and you can see that shadow is really closing in on them very quickly. Let me turn off the 2017 path and zoom in a bit here. You see they're nearing totality in just a few moments, and their weather is looking Thank you. 
thousands of people how to do this as well. They don't have to find the deals. They don't have to use them. for the eclipse today. Good weather. It's good weather right now. We have high clouds. So totality is going to look just a little bit fuzzy to us, a little bit hazy. But we are moments away from seeing the diamond ring here. This is awesome. Oh, 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 oh I thought we saw it. I think we got about one early. minute. OK, one minute away now. OK, listen, we're about one minute away from seeing the diamond ring. After we see the diamond ring, I'm going to conclude the broadcast. You guys can finish watching it on NASA if you want to independently. But I'm going to leave after they show the diamond ring, beloveds, because I have another live starting at 6. And I have to give me something to eat, okay? So let me go back to the share. We're about to get word that uh, we're at Totality. Oh, you can see the planets. The crowds are going nuts. This is crazy. Bob, this is amazing. There we go. Don't, don't look at the sun yet. It's not quite totality, but you can still see some of the planets right away. Very close. And the crowd is very happy. Oh, total darkness here. This is incredible. Oh, wow. There it is. Diamond ring. Diamond ring. It's amazing! Oh, it's amazing! Sure. That is awesome! Look at that! Oh, wow! Yeah. Wow, that's, a, that's a amazing! Wow. Jupiter. Complete totality. I see Jupiter. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Wow, this is amazing, Bob. Wow, that is huge. So we have some prominences. I think we want to go look through the yeah, scope. Yeah, go, go through it. Look through the scope. I'm going to walk over with you as you talk through the scope. We are right here at one of the telescopes that we have positioned here. Bob is looking through with the naked eye and so going to give us some feedback on that. Maybe, on, a, maybe yeah. some prominence as we're seeing. We What's amazing is how dark it is compared to 2017. Much darker a lot more astronomical features. We have seen Jupiter, and I believe, what planet, what, what planet is that, Bob? That's Venus to the right. To the right. That's I the Venus. I can't quite see Mercury. I think it's obscured by those light clouds. Yeah, light there. clouds. But 360 degree sunset around us. This is amazing. <laughs> it's going to get darker. It's going to get darker. It's going to get darker. Wow, this is already clear. pretty dark. We are not in the middle of the shadow quite yet. Wow. You see it? OK, 246 to go. OK. All right, so we're getting some live data from the team here. I tell you, it's really impressive, Bob, because... Oh, my gosh, oh, it's getting better. That, that, see that prominence at the yes, bottom? Yes, at the it? bottom, there's a prominence. I see it. I keep looking I can't believe the clarity. That It's so much darker than 2017. It's gorgeous. And what's awesome, we have six telescopes running back here, That's capturing awesome. data, streaming this. And, well, and that's a big important part here. This is not just capturing image to share with people uh, watching the show. You are actually capturing scientific data that can be used by scientists everywhere. We are, and we've seen totality across North America so far in Mazatlan. Now we're experiencing it ourselves, and we'll experience it after this on the Jumbotron from it's like, the other sites. It's like the most amazing eclipse train you could ever ride on. This is a bit better than 2017. I, without a doubt, without a doubt. No, no cloud. And you know what's interesting is the, cl the, the crowd is quieting down. They seem to be experiencing the moment, taking it all in. A really special moment here. Look at this. So we must be getting close to the center. Where are we at? Two minutes. So one minute, 30 seconds. The corona is looking brighter. Yes, eyes are adjusting now. I mean, that is amazing, Bob. And, and 
how much corona you see. I mean, like, oh, just wow. last time That's I didn't like see that much. Visually, oh, there goes a bat. Uh, a bat <laughs> flying over the crowd. Oh, yeah, we talked about the animals. Now now we see them becoming active. We found uh, a Luna model earlier as wow. well. But wow. that corona is about four times the diameter of the sun. That is massive. That is amazing, Bob. And I'm really curious about that prominence, the prominence at the bottom. Have you looked yet, Blair? You have to look. So take a look. So Blair's looking through the scope. Now oh my goodness! Totality. Oh no, that one right, right at the bottom is significant, Bob. It looks like a, a, a coronal mass ejection, but uh, don't don't fact check me on that because I'm just a novice. But there's actually two on the bottom, Bob. You got to look at that. There's two. Look, 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 look at the thirty seconds. Thirty seconds left in totality. Uh, jump in there. <laughs> Take a look. It's great because uh, we have Eclipse. telescopes out here for people to look at and actually see oh, total you can eclipse see more through corona. it. And uh, we're getting close. I don't know what you guys are seeing on the, on television. But Ten seconds. We got to cut it off. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ten seconds before we need to put our glasses back on. Okay. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good. Uh, we put the cap back on the telescope to make sure nobody looks. What an amazing Too event, late. Bob. There's a diamond ring. There's a second one. There it is. Oh, snap. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, it's like it was scheduled. <laughs> yeah, somebody had the timing right here. Oh, oh man, God. that's amazing. We will see shadow bands oh. again here. Uh, you hear the crowd. Everybody's excited. There we go. What an amazing moment here at Saluki wow. Stadium. Oh my gosh. With Bob Bear and 10,000 fans all loving every moment of it. Bob, some final words. Well, I think we just had an eagle fly over. Okay, so, <laughs> but incredible. Well, that's so, one of those things you said. We saw animal reaction, we yeah. heard it, we felt it. It was wonderful. So we got to keep an eye out for shadow bands. We're going to see them again in about one minute on the ground. Here. Okay, so we'll keep looking for those shadow bands on the ground. But I got to tell you guys uh, back at the studio, uh, I know you guys have seen eclipses already. There's still some to come, but what an amazing moment. Back to you guys. Uh, good weather all the way to the end. Thank you, Blair. We are in Indianapolis. We are almost at totality. With me, I have Nikki Rail, the Associate Director for Flight Programs for the Heliophysics Division, and Denise Hill, NASA's Outreach and Communications Lead for the NASA Heliophysics Division. You guys, let's get our glasses on. And you can hear the crowds. Okay, they're in Indiana, beloved. As everyone gets on their glasses, we are so, so close. Ladies, what are we seeing right now? I mean, just the ambiance of this moment. It is beautiful. We're just seeing a really small crescent, but the light all around us, it's so dusky and I'm just odd. It is. I'm feeling a temperature drop already, which I can't believe. It's feeling cooler. The crowd is starting to go wild. Okay. We're still seeing that Here crescent. we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right. We are so All right, close. and the best soundtrack you could possibly ask for in the background here, Absolutely. Blue, blue, blue. Oh, we're so close. Okay, just a little bit left, and you can really hear the crowd oh, here we go. 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 Look at that. Almost. Almost. We are so, so close. And we oh my gosh, are going it is oh my Whoa. gosh and you can really see those streamers coming out right now i'm seeing some bright bright lights around where we're seeing it cratering and i can see those streamers coming out of the corona and are those bailey speeds are we seeing any we're bailey's seeing speeds? we were seeing some bailey speeds they're transitioning out a little bit but yes those bright light where the sunlight is shining through craters on the moon mountains wow. and craters and look at those streamers of the corona oh. it is putting on a show and it is Dark. Holy moly. It is, it is dark. I gotta take a peek at the crowd right now. Oh, look at the crowd. Oh, oh my, my god. Absolutely oh my going wild. 
Everyone's got their phone out. It is now safe to look at the eclipse without your glasses. Wow. What an amazing sight. Folks, we've got four minutes here, a little under four minutes to enjoy this. Wow. And if you were uh, in a, an open field right now, you'd be able to see a sunset, a 360 degree sunset yes. all around us. Yes, you can, can see a little bit of that now. You can see the light around yes. us a little bit. I have to say, this is my first total eclipse in these. This, this is, is my yeah. first total eclipse. Incredible. This to totality. Wow. This is Wow, okay, so I, I think we're seeing Yep, those beautiful prominences. The corona is just putting on such a show right now. Yes. It's got my full attention. Wow. That's all I can watch. Holy cow. Oh, we've got some, so some, some very um, appropriate music on, yeah. going on in the background yes. here. This is the best version of getting mooned that I have ever experienced <laughs> in my life. Don't strain your eyes. <laughs> oh, wow. I am just in awe. There just aren't the right words to describe this. I'm just noticing it feels so strange to me right now. Like, yes. I feel the hair on my arm wow. standing up. I feel like it's nighttime and I'm, what it am is. I doing? And, and it's daytime. And actually, folks, we are starting to get some nighttime insects coming out. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, we're starting to see lights. bugs. Yeah, we are seeing yes. bugs. Tonight. It's hard to hear them over the crowd, but wow. I can definitely see yes. them flying. Yes, I think the, the animals are a little bit confused. Nikki, while I have you, you know, we've got a lot of programs at NASA looking at the sun. No eclipse glasses required. As the Associate Director of Flight Programs, tell me, what can we expect NASA to be sending to the sun in the few in next well, few years? We are so lucky in the midst of this incredible time of Solar Max. We're getting ready. Oh, to the diamond ring right now. Diamond ring. Take a look. Take a look. Put your glasses back on. Be safe. That is the diamond ring, folks. Wow. Spectacular. Oh, my gosh. You can even hear fireworks in the distance. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And the light is already starting oh, wow. to change. It really is. You can hear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What a moment. <laughs> I love those fireworks. Yeah, Indi Indianapolis is really pulling out all of the stops and we love them for it. I also want to take a moment here to thank our two telescope operators, John and Dana, who have been providing these telescopes. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm about to conclude the broadcast. Let me pause the music for a moment. I hope you all enjoyed that. It was absolutely amazing and beautiful. And I'm so glad that I was able to share that with you all, that we all watched it together because I was just going to go outside, okay, until you all talked me into showing it. And so that was really fun. Queen, I just watched here in.